This is a HeadGum Podcast. This week on the program, who says there's a toilet paper shortage with this many mummies? It's the mummy. I'm Andrew Jupin. <laughs> Steven Sadak. Eric, toilet paper. Chris Cat. <laughs> and we hate movies. Hello, everyone. Welcome to We Hate Movies. Thank you for tuning in. As always, that's right. We are talking The Mummy from the grand year of 1999, directed by We Hate Movies' favorite Stephen Somers. One of the great years of movies, man. 1999. It was a big one. It was big a one. Oh, yeah. Uh, you had uh, Phantom Menace. Okay. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, Fight Club. Cool. Right. Uh, bringing Out the Dead. Uh, American Beauty. Great movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> great movie to bring your kids to. <laughs> The Insider. Obviously, The oh, Matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, big it was, year. It was a good year. No, I just remember what, seeing The Matrix and being such a Star Wars whatever, being like, gosh, I hope this doesn't take attention away from Star Wars. <laughs> this is an exciting movie, but I just I just sure hope it doesn't take attention away from my beloved Star Wars. You're, you're, it turns out both didn't need sequels. <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. <laughs> Steve's planting bombs in, like, Matrix screenings just to make oh, sure that Jesus. nobody can see it. What is the... um? What was the release date difference there? Was it like a May July thing? Well, I think Matrix was first. I want to say that sounds right. I'm gonna look it up. You I'm, I'm kind of talking. curious about that. Well, Steve looks that up. By the way, we just want to mention before we get into the episode. Um, you know, there's obviously more important things going on in the world. Uh, but just a soft reminder: all of those tour dates that we were supposed to be doing right now uh, have moved uh, to the fall. Um, so we just want to remind folks: those shows right now are still on. Uh, our bookers are monitoring the situations and everything. They're in constant communications with these venues, and we just checked in uh, today, as of this recording, which is June the 10th. The shows are still a go, so uh, check out whmpodcast.com uh, for the tour schedule. Do you um, want to go through what those are real quick? By the way, uh, The yeah. Matrix yeah. was released March 31st, uh, Phantom Menace May, whatever, May 19th. So there wow. was a, So I was like, I was shit my pants for about six whole weeks. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Crazy that The Matrix, I mean, because obviously they just didn't know what it was going to be. But yeah. like, yeah, it makes sense that that's what? a March dump. So wait, Steve, was it was your worry that they were gonna make too it was gonna make more money than Yes, oh it was like make more money, be more be bigger than Star Wars. Well, it know, turns like, out it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> but were you worried that it that, like the success of the Matrix could then indeed signal the cancellation of the release of the Phantom Menace? <laughs> <laughs> no, like that it could like affect like the Star Wars franchise going forward. I see. I see. <laughs> I was very scared yeah. about that. Yeah. And it kind of did, actually. <laughs> so you you were right to be terrified steve uh yeah sure let's go through those tour dates i don't have that in front of me either i, uh, I do so uh september 29th the rex theater in pittsburgh pennsylvania talking about taken and then uh, uh september 30th at hilarities in cleveland oh <laughs> is uh, a nightmare on elm street 3 the dream that, warriors i've been looking forward to talking about that movie forever I think I've wanted to talk about it with people since I first saw it, like, in high school. Uh, and then on October the 2nd, we're going to be in Detroit, which I've never been to. I'm so excited to go to Detroit, ideally, <laughs> on October the 2nd, to talk RoboCop 3, a movie I barely remember. And then on October 11th, uh, we'll be at the Salem Horror Festival in Salem, Massachusetts, title To Be Determined. Yeah. Mm, but it's going to be spooky, I bet. But we have already determined the episode for November 8th at the Comedy Zone in Charlotte, North Carolina. Comedy Zone! And that would be Under Siege. Uh, and then uh, a little uh, little lightness at the Orange Peel. Uh, we're going to be talking about Junior on uh, November the, uh, the 10th in Asheville, North Carolina. That's going to be super exciting. Yes, and then we'll be finishing it out on uh, November 11th at Zanies in Nashville, Tennessee, talking Footloose. Oh, man. I am psyched about this lineup of movies, you guys. I think 
regardless of if they are comedies or action movies or whatever, uh, we're going to have a great time all around. These these seven shows are going to be fucking great. I am pumped. That's all I have to say is I'm pumped. I'm very pumped. I am very pumped that the summer blockbuster extravaganza continues with this mummy movie. And I want to turn to my buddy, Eric Siska, because he has a catchphrase Uh-oh. for movies, for movies just oh, right. like this, where yes. everyone's yeah. got their pitchforks out, out already. <laughs> It's okay to like a movie. It was okay to be younger than us in 1999. It's <laughs> totally fine. This movie is serviceable, hangoverable. I would say we'll get the recommendations at the end, but I don't have outright ill will towards this movie, just so everyone is clear. I used to hate this movie. I last night my viewing, I had a lot of fun with it. I still I think it's it's worthy of this feed, but I had more fun with it than I thought I was going to. I think this is kind of a prime example of the thesis that Eric Siska has been driving home to the folks at home for the last beep, 10 beep. years almost. Okay. And here's here it is right here. I like this movie. I've seen this movie upwards of like 20 times, like I've said. Wow! It's It was one of like the first standard deaf DVD movies we ever had. So that, it, you know, it automatically got a lot of play. But I just rewatched it right now, and I still had a fucking ball. And at the same time, I am ready to make fun of it. <laughs> so let's get our heads nice and level, folks, because nobody should give a shit. <laughs> I ne- yeah, when I saw this back in 99, I think I didn't see it in theaters. I just saw it on video. And I just wasn't into it, uh-huh. and I, I and I I still think the tone is kind of a bit off. I know that we're we're trying to have fun, yada yada yada. Like in the movie, we're trying to have fun. I kind of wanted to be a bit spookier, maybe a touch. Ah, I don't. Ah, I don't know, man. Honestly, like because the more an action movie gets toward like the horror side of things, then you get that other Stephen Summers movie. We yeah, see. that's a good point. Right. Uh, well, deep, you know, would- deep, whatever the fuck, Deep Rising. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, yes, no, well, yeah. Deep Rising rules, but... Um, <laughs> oh, it like, rules, does it? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I think these are... Mummy and Deep Rising are the ones that I like from him. Mm. Those are the two that I can stomach. I do for the... Like, the, the horror thing. The original one is pretty scary for what it is. You're talking uh, about the Karloff movie. The Karloff one. I think yeah. it's pretty spooky. So I think it's actually fun that they blew it out a bit and made it an adventure movie. It's yeah. not, like, horror at all to me. Well, in the way that they blow it out towards adventure, it becomes kind of an Indiana Jones clone. And if yes. you turn down the horror slightly and just have mysticism and a slight spirituality invading the reality, of the <laughs> yeah, end, yeah, it would then be more of that kind of adventure film. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I do appreciate that this movie, like, you know, obviously all the action stuff aside, the story... Is, is like loosely uh, mirroring the story of the Karloff movie as far as like, here's this mummy who's trying to also resurrect his lady friend. Uh, you know, I don't believe world domination is really on the table. Hey, it's- man, thanks for bringing me back to life. Can my girlfriend come too, man? Oh, please, man. I can't be an immortal without my fucking lady friend, man. <laughs> Cheryl, come over here and show yourself. Isn't she pretty? <laughs> Just if you're bringing people back, I'm just saying she's cool and she doesn't eat much. <laughs> Look, she's got a Terrapin Station t-shirt. Isn't that beautiful? You ever see a mummy in a Terrapin Station t-shirt, man? I think also, I did see this in the theaters too, and I think, Steve, this is also a great example of, man, sometimes you just need a big screen experience. Mm, yeah, that, I think that's fair. <laughs> I think that like not seeing this in theaters and just seeing it on VHS and kind of not giving a shit to begin with. Yeah. Kind of colored my thing. Because I actually specifically remember <clears throat> going to see it in the theater and being like, the mummy. I mean, all right, it's at the movies. You know, like <laughs> yeah. it literally was that. And it was sort of like a pleasant surprise. I should admit, I, I, I'm a big Brendan Fraser head. Mm. So like I really liked his movies when they were coming out. I saw this in the theater. I saw Blast from the Past in theaters. Oh, wow. yikes, dude. That's unfortunate. And uh, Gods and Monsters, which he's amazing in. Yeah, I've still never seen that movie, actually. Now, in that movie, does he also not know what a television is? Or <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. like is he just like, is he become like, oh, no, we need to teach him what actual, <laughs> what has happened in the world in the last hundred years. Yes, you see, <laughs> they record it first and then they televise it here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this movie starts off, it was actually interesting because we just did the uh, Cats commentary and you know, cue seeing that thing, I had to watch this movie 
<clears throat> twice. So like I got really familiar with the Universal logo mm. and it was cool to see this one like 20 years in the past. Uh, just slightly different. This is the one they debuted in 97, I believe the copyright says. But the globe here, you guys, turns into the sun. Also kind of like mimicking Indiana Jones with the Paramount logo yes. turning into the mountain, which is kind of cool. I will say at the start of this, um, nice, decent, and again, nighttime is very forgiving, uh, but nice, decent CGI ancient Egypt here at the start. Yeah, the start mm-hmm. looked pretty good to me. Most I, of the I, graphics, I think, are pretty good in this. I'll be honest. The, 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 early, like mummy, shit, the early mummy <sighs> is bad. That's bad. Yeah, that's uh, bad. But once you get like one or two hunks dead, like <laughs> then it looks okay. The sea of the dead at the end looks like absolute trash. Um, I, 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 and I give it, I, I forgive it a lot. I mean, I, I do actually think that this movie is smartly less CGI than I remember it because that's one of the things I hate. Like, oh, that CGI is terrible. But yeah. it was, it just, it. There's less of it. Like if this movie was made today, it would be nothing but bad CGI. It would be nothing but bad CGI. And there's a moment that I so appreciate well, in this well, movie. Hold on a second. If this movie was made today, it was. The Mummy 2017 with Tom Cruise. <laughs> yes. Oh, right, man. Yeah. Yeah. Still, I, don't, I, felt- I don't remember it being CGI heavy, but it was definitely heavy on the snores because that's what I, I was doing. I fell asleep in that movie, dude. I, I uh, rented it, and it was like right after Tom Cruise like wakes up from the plane crash, like he wakes up in the body bag or whatever, I straight up fucking fell asleep. The, the only good thing about that is Russell Frat Crow. <laughs> Russell oh. Fat Crow is so <laughs> such a breath of fresh air. When he's that doing would, Henry Jekyll, yeah, and he's just blown out. Like he's he knows he's into a piece of shit, so he's just having fun. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I see. I didn't even get to him in the movie. Is honestly. that a period piece like this is, or is that like contemporary? No, that's, that's present day. Oh, yeah. Okay, so so he's like modern day Henry Jekyll, kind of like okay, that sucks. He's still yeah. kind of dressed like what you'd expect, though. The, yeah, no that's hat, true. Actually, but, yeah. yeah. Well, it's weird that that movie starts with like a Mission Impossible style, like plane crash, like action scene. And you're just like, what? I thought I was fucking watching The Mummy. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's Tom Cruise's The Mummy. So it has yeah. to be a Mission Impossible movie. Exactly. And then it's also a weird thing because you're watching the movie and you're like, oh, so he's like not the titular mummy. Like, what? <laughs> what is he doing in this movie at all? They're both mummies. It's, oh, it's, both it's, mummies? It's, 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 a, it's a real, it's a humdinger, I gotta tell you. Wow. <laughs> Somebody in the pitch room really gave him one. What if there's two mummies? So we, <laughs> we do, we have this like opening intro narration by Oded Fair, who comes into play later. Uh, apparently they wanted, uh, they, they wanted, originally we we're going to have uh, Arnold Vosloo do it, or is it Vosloo? I always do this, and I want to fuck that up. I've always said Vosloo. I'll keep it with Vaslu. Arnold Vaslu was supposed to do it, but his character wouldn't have known English. So they're like, which makes sense. So they wanted Oded Fair to do it. I I kind of appreciate that, actually. And uh, Oded Fair totally fucking rules in this movie. Yeah, he's um, a, a hot piece of ace. My God. <laughs> this, man. this is one of the hunkier movies you're going to find. I oh, mean, it, like, is, it is a hunk-tastic well, motion picture. But what about Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo? Where he he's plays, shirtless in that. Yeah. So that uh, so that is a little bit better, I he will say, in that a, sense. He's taking care of a fish tank that he betrusts to this guy he meets, <laughs> Rob Schneider. <laughs> who would have thought? I think oh. that that's going to have a comical ending, is my guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's going to end sillily. I also noticed uh, and did not need to look any further into it to see that he was definitely probably playing a terrorist on 24 at one yep. point. I mean, that's likely. that of was course. his career boom. Was You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just sort of like there was, there was all Steve, those things. Steve, pun not intended. Please. The pun definitely not oh intended. Oh, my God. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, you're going to play the banker who funds the terrorists exactly. this time. Oh, no, you're, you're a double agent. You're a, you're a CIA agent, but you're taking down <laughs> terrorists from your country. It's like, well, I'm from Israel. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Uh, so the quick story of this is, you know, there was this pharaoh, uh, Seti the first. Dude, this and, guy is jacked out of dude, his fucking mind. And it's kind of crazy that his lady friend right here is going for fucking Arnold Vosloo <laughs> when you have this professional wrestler waiting in the wings. <laughs> Anybody see uh, who this lady was? No. Uh, she is Marta from uh, Arrested Development. 
No, get yes. out of town, oh, really? you're right, yeah. I, when I was watching it last night, I've seen the, I, I didn't notice it. I mean, I was like, I've seen this woman in something a million times, and I don't know what it was, and it was that. Wow, that's hilarious. Wait. I don't know if anyone else just caught it, by the way, but I definitely just accidentally did a job of the hut laugh. <laughs> did you? <laughs> At the Marta reveal, I just kind of went, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I got to say, man, this quarantine a- a- lasts any longer than I have to build me a fucking platform in my house to slide around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sliding Steve Sadak. Yeah, okay. Sadak on the dais. <laughs> a- a- Anton B. Crumb. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, so this, so uh, Marta, the Pharaoh's mistress, uh, was getting it on with Arnold Vosloo on the side. Uh, and as we hear Oded Fair tell it, for their love, they were willing to risk life itself. And so they get caught fooling around. Dude, but he put, th- this guy is very, the Pharaoh is very um, uh, protective of his lady. He puts basically like um, uh, that uh, powder you put in a, in a, in a bag full of money at a bank on this lady all over it just in case you know what i mean like well it's you know what you know what i was thinking of it's act, it reminded me of uh when like James Bond wants to like check to make sure no one's broken into his hotel room and yeah. the way he does it is he tapes a piece of tape to his door that they can't see and then it's like oh look at that <laughs> you know so like that was that's what it, i thought of it as like the body paint cuz he's like hey your fucking shoulders smudged. Did someone touch you? <laughs> and then, like, uh, uh, Arnold Vossel is walking around like Robert Pattinson in good time, man. It's all over his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, of course, she's uh, she's murdered. Um, and Arnold Vossel, uh, his his uh, punishment is he's mummified alive. <laughs> he, right. Oh, the mistress he, kills herself, by yeah, the way. Yeah, he calls out to her, I will resurrect yeah, you, which yes. must be very comforting <laughs> while she's stabbing herself in the guts. <laughs> hey, babe, I'm going to fix this. You don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, why, you can just drink the poison. Don't worry about it, babe. It's good. <laughs> I'm going to get help. I'm going to get help. A thousand years. A thousand years minimum. <laughs> You're good, right? Babe, babe, don't worry about it. I got the resurrection <laughs> spell going. Give me Wait. my little Egyptian black medical book of the dead. <laughs> Look, you, you lend me 500 bucks. I'm going to turn it into a thousand, babe. It's going to be awesome. Guess what? In 1992, we're going to rock together. <laughs> Oh man, so uh, so it's actually weird. I realize I got a sequence of events out of order here. So she commits suicide, and then somehow, like, he's not arrested immediately because he then like takes the body and he's trying to do this ritual. Right. He gets his priests and him escape, and then they yes. they abscond with her body. They like raid the morgue or whatever. Oh which yeah, I dude. Pre- you know what? Show don't tell. Give me the fun morgue ra- rating scene. I know a morgue then is just like a a dry room, I guess. But. <laughs> yeah, no, but I would love to see that. It's like Arnold Vosloo just like carrying a corpse out in the middle of the night, like right. a little Burke yeah. and Hare kind of story. He puts on like a medical robe. <laughs> He's pretending to be a doctor. <laughs> he looks at the chart. <laughs> it's all hieroglyphics and say, "Ooh, dead." <laughs> so yeah, he gets found out. The curse or the ceremony, the ritual is not finished. So she doesn't come back from the dead. He is mummified alive after they cut his tongue out and then dump a fucking bucket of scarabs all over him before closing the coffin. Man, these scarabs get a lot of play in this movie. They do. Well, apparently there was that was like part of a Joe Dante thing. This was like a property that kind of kept trying to bring back, obviously. And there was a Joe Dante version with Daniel Day Lewis, which sounds fucking awesome. Much better version, I think. Yes. I mean, I'm like, going I, to fight the mummy. <laughs> no, he was going to be the mummy. No, that's bad. I think that they were trying to build an uh, an early '90s uh, d- dark universe with like intense British actors. You got Gary Oldman as Dracula, Daniel Day Lewis as the Mummy. Um. So anyway, so that's the whole thing, and it's in this uh, the City of the Dead, Hamanoptera, this burial site city. Uh. So we go back to that exact same location, but now we're in 1923, uh, and this is Brendan Fraser. Uh, and a, he's like fighting with the French Foreign Legion, uh, which I don't. I would like a little bit of backstory there as to how that happened. <laughs> yeah, because that's kind of a cool story. And his name is Rick, just like uh, Rick in Casablanca. Did they have a stake in Egypt? Or oh, right. Something? I mean, and they filmed this in Morocco. So there you go. Oh, look yeah. at that! I'm sure they did, Cabin. I mean, like all those fucking countries had stakes in places that didn't belong to them back they, then. They, yeah, they, they they say something something. Like, Odin Fair is like and. Uh, this area was heavily contested for years and years, yada, yada, yada. It's great that we're on the side of the enemy then. 
Oh, Fantastic. absolutely. Yeah, everyone there should get the fuck out of there. Take your little white hats and get the fuck out. Uh, but Oded Fair says that he is part of a group called the Magi, which are descendants of the Pharaoh's bodyguards themselves. And his boring ass job is to keep watch over Hominoptera to make sure people like Brendan Fraser and the French Foreign Legion don't come in looking for treasure and accidentally unlock this fucking mummy. I which mean, is the movie. Yeah, I mean, he, <laughs> to be honest, he's not great at his job. No, no. yeah, that's very true, Kevin. They're, they're kind of uh, sleeping at the switch here. There should be a review after this one, I think. <laughs> the head magi should bring him in and ask a few questions. Dude, it's just a stinger scene with Oded Fair, and he's fucking... Uh, he's, like, talking to his supervisor for some reason, played by Steven Root. <laughs> Classic stinger. I, I am just... the uh, head of the magi. Uh, what did you think you were doing? It's got a clipboard. <laughs> I do think, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, they had like fucking, you know, 6,000 years of, you know, of of really nailing it. You know what I mean? Really keeping people out of here. But well, you, all it takes is one time, my guys. Do you think Oded Farah's character uh, was like, like, you know what? I took my first vacation in <laughs> 30 years of being on this job. And it was just a long weekend. And somehow, you idiots managed to fuck up 3,000 years of tight security. Jesus yep. Christ, you fended off armies. And this, it was Brendan Fraser and a bunch of American idiots that got it. This whole order is just like the Last Crusade guys that are protecting the Grail. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I might be wrong. There might be an actual order protecting us from mummies that are going on right now. <laughs> so I don't, I'm just trying to stop a tweet. Well, hey, dude, look or look around you, man. You fucking see any mummies anywhere? <laughs> you know, dude, thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, we get it. We're starting to get into a little scuffle with these guys. Uh, here we have Stephen Summers, next door neighbor slash best friend, Kevin J. O'Connor <laughs> as the coward. I was surprised he dies at the end of this movie. Spoiler alert. I, I could have sworn he was in the second one. Like, because that's his lucky rabbit's foot, dude. That guy's in everything. Is it a thing? I haven't seen the second one in a very he's, long he's time. He's not in it. He's not oh, okay. in it. Yeah, but I was, I was pretty shocked by that. Well, I was going to say, because I wouldn't put it past the sequel to this movie to just recast him as somebody else. The mummy could, like, uh, 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 possess him or something. That would have been a way to do it. Or just it's Kevin J. O'Connor literally playing a different person. Yeah, he's just got a blonde hair and his name is like Klaus or something. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it was uh, that was speaking of the casting, by the way, this was a little bit of a mystery for us with this character is like, OK, Kevin J. O'Connor, what are you supposed to be playing here? And then it turns out it's a Hungarian dude. So you're like, all right. He is fine. one of the reasons. I mean, look, I, and I, I think he's fine. I enjoy his cartoonishness. But it gets really tiresome, and I remember at least in 99, this was a guy that pushed me over the edge with this movie. Well, the problem is is that they have a few too many comic reliefs going on here. Yes. Yep. yep. Uh, like, Jonathan could go. The brother, I really think he could just go. See, I, but the brother is the brother is what ties this, is one of the reasons, or one of the ways, rather, that this movie ties itself to the Karloff movie, because in the, in those Universal Monster Mummy movies specifically, there's always the one character who's like, I'm in archaeology for the big bucks, and yeah. is always trying to scam and like find the treasure and all of that shit. So it's a welcome addition that he's there. The problem with the Kevin J. O'Connor character, as I see it anyway, is that he goes from being like the mischievous guy who's who's then like the mummy's Renfield kind of character, which is interesting. But by the end of the movie, he's fucking Abu the monkey from Aladdin. <laughs> yes. But and he, it just totally devolves into silliness. He also, he betrays uh, Rick at the start of the film, and then he goes on to continue to betray him. It would be interesting if that brother character was the betrayer instead in some way sure. towards the end. You know, like he's enchanted by the mummy. This will fetch a high prize to my imperialist pig government. I, <laughs> yeah, totally, dude. No, that would be a really interesting <laughs> Way to fucking spin it. I just find Jonathan very boring throughout this, whereas Kevin and J. O'Connor, occasionally I'm like interested in him. And I like the idea that you make it so like if you are uh, self-centered and, uh, you know, totally only in it for greed and surviving, yeah. you, you will make it to the end. But at the end, you will die. I do agree yeah. with you, Chris, that he, he is a, a bit dull, but this it, the whole like sister fucking thing, it made me think, like, is this a Fast and Furious movie? What are we doing with this? <laughs> oh, my God, dude. And so this guy, Jonathan, by your logic, would be the Vin Diesel character? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Who it's, wants Coronas and barbecued chicken? Family all, is forever. <laughs> isn't that right, mummy? 
He's British. <laughs> yes. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I do think I, I want Kevin J. O'Connor and Tom Noonan to play brothers who run a mortuary. That's all I want. Oh, yeah. dude. You know what, dude? Write it. All Write right. that movie and then pitch it to them. And honestly, there's like a 40% chance you'll do they'll do it. <laughs> um, um, Stephen, why, this is Tom Noonan. Um, why? Why? So you, I retire from acting in your script and I run a mortuary. <laughs> It's not a. You say Tom Noonan all over the script. You know, you know oh, there's there's dead there's dead people everywhere. You just gotta reach out and grab them. You gotta know how to reach out and grab them. I do like this. This is like a, a JCVD version of Tom Noonan. Yes. Oh, that's right. So in oh in the mortuary office, it's like a poster for Manhunter, a poster for the House of the Devil. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm fucking loving this. <laughs> and my uh, shit heel brother, Kevin J. O'Connor, who's uh, not played by Kevin J. Well, he is Kevin J. O'Connor. Ah, jeez. Ah, Kevin. <laughs> uh, uh, Tom Newton. <laughs> ah, Tom Newton. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we bought this mortuary, and all the doorways are too short for both of us. It's a real problem. This is a real fool's errand. I cannot believe I, I retired from acting to do this. <laughs> Kevin, oh, this oh. is worse than the time we bought a zoo. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, Shirley, the uh, script reader. Hi, Shirley. Hi, how are you doing back there? Hi, yes. Yeah, nice to see you. I'm acting right now. He constantly I'm breaks here. the fourth wall, too. It'd be great. Is it like a take is left in where he's just like, Steve, I can't believe you're trying to fucking play the same music from Manhunter in this movie. The script specifically states it, Steve, in the Garden of Eden. It's right there. Are you kidding me? No, we need big synths when we see Tom Noonan eat a sandwich. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, yeah, so we're in 1923. The French are fighting to dig up this fucking site, and the Magi are like, please do not unleash this evil into our world. And uh, it's kind of great because uh, Benny, like, uh, uh Kevin J. Connor, like, le- like, jumps inside of a tomb. Rick is left alone, and then Ke- oh, dead fair, all his fault is like, everyone's like, should we kill him? And it's like, no, the desert will kill him. Well, no, how about you do your fucking job? This is the performance <laughs> review again. Like, ooh, yep. you got to kill those guys. Sorry. Well, the desert took the oath, too. It was there when the oath happened, <laughs> so I thought maybe. We have a white asshole policy, and whenever there's a white asshole rummaging around our crypts, we got to kill him. Yeah, why, don't you, mean, why don't you drag the desert in here and review that? How about that <laughs> shit? Also, because I think in the second movie, Oded Fair's character eats shit, too. So it's like... I think that's right. Is that directed by John Waters? (laughs) (laughs) John Waters, the mummy (laughs) return. Multiple mummies. (laughs) Oh, yeah, there you go. There's the title. I like that. Um, Yeah, so, yeah, he says, the creature remains undiscovered. The desert will kill him. We pop to uh, Cairo three years later, getting the party started at the Museum of Antiquities. Absolutely. And Rachel Weiss just got her fucking eyebrows waxed. Like, holy shit, man. These things look weird. It's yeah. atrocious, dude. What are we fucking doing to this poor woman? <laughs> it's a very, like, Uncle Leo, are you mad at me scenario. <laughs> oh, my God. You're right. <laughs> it's like, it's fuck- like the, uh, the eyebrows of the queen or the fucking, uh, yeah, the evil queen in, like, Snow White or some shit. And her haircut, too. It's like Betty Boop shit, you know? Which used yeah, to drive yep. men wild, by the way. The sight, the visage of Betty Boop. Like, oh, oh dude, there are, there are so many bored sailors that have jerked off to Betty Boop. Yeah. Now just <laughs> now she just adorns disgusting boardwalk t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, poor <laughs> Betty Boop. What a fall from grace. <laughs> you ever? I, here's here's something that I'd be mm. interested in. Is there someone out there wearing Betty Boop t-shirts that doesn't smoke cigarettes? <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Maybe some legal. children. <laughs> no what, what use would a child have to wear a Betty Boop well, t-shirt if you have a Betty Boop fucking father or a Betty Boop mom they're gonna <laughs> don't buy a, booty, a fucking don't. Betty Boop fucking t-shirt for the kid you do not want a Betty Boop father Kevin I don't even know what that is but I'm telling you you don't it's, want it it's listen, a guy listen. who jerks off to cartoons of course listen, listen son I'm, I love Betty Boop it makes me wild and no the light Betty Boop is going out of the world the light is draining you have to carry on the <laughs> Oh, maybe the that's order why of the... boop. <laughs> oh, the order of boop. Gross. <laughs> yeah, we're well, the order of boop. You got to stand outside of a b- shitty Ferris wheel on a boardwalk smoking <laughs> cigarettes. We, we all agree that Eddie Valiant treated her like shit in that movie. <laughs> he goes on the shit list. Hey, kid, those cartoons ain't racist. They're just products of their time. <laughs> yeah, the order of boop heritage, not hate. 
<laughs> God, wouldn't you just love to be one of those skeletons that dances with her? <laughs> Dude, wanna... those old cartoons are terrifying. <laughs> You they ever really get a look are. at any of those? Oh, yeah. they're they're haunting, dude. Holy they're... shit, dude! Like, uh, folks at home, go to YouTube. Do yourself a favor if you want to get fucking chilled to your soul. Google or uh, go to YouTube and search for some fucking old Betty Boop cartoons. They are on there, and they are mm. bone chilling. I bet if you dig deep enough, Betty Boop was invented by H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> <laughs> well, weirdly, Rachel Vice is kind of dancing with skeletons in this movie. That's, That's true, true Cabin. Uh, so there's a there's a fucking crazy gag that I do not believe belongs in this movie. Nope. Where Rachel Vice dominoes all of these huge bookshelves, and it's... then the wheeze and the juice guy fucking yells <laughs> at her. I feel like her dynamic and then her dynamic with Brendan Fraser, I think they're trying to do the Cary Grant type of thing, like a you know, yes, um, yeah. His, yeah, 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 yeah. His girl totally bringing up type. baby, or yeah, his girlfriend. Yeah, oh, exactly. It just, Monkey it just, business. It skews a little too cartoony at certain points. This movie, and that this is the one that really gets me is like because like nothing comes from that, and also it doesn't wind up being a callback later in the movie. Like she doesn't knock a bunch of fucking columns down to kill some mummies or something. You know what I mean? I, I, so it's I, just like for nothing. I do want to shout him out. Cause I do think that he should be referred to always as the Weez and the juice guy, but his name is Eric Avari. He's had a good career. Is he still with us by the way? He is. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think about the Weez and the juice guy, <laughs> like maybe like bi-monthly. And I'm just like, I hope that dude's doing all right. But there is a casting paradox in this movie though, because Weez and the juice guy yes. who winds up being like the, the secret order, uh, the Magi like leader he's at least an agent with them uh, but he's like undercover at the museum he's in the movie but then also the English actor who played the dad slash bad guy in the first uh, like the Robin Williams Jumanji movie mm -hmm. that guy's also in this movie and I I'm telling you I confuse those dudes all the time it, and they play similar characters a lot isn't he also the butler from the nanny isn't that his no, name? No, it's a third no. different guy. Oh, it is. Okay. The butler from The Nanny, I believe, is actually like an American or a Canadian oh. actor. So I was about to say, is this three identical strangers that we're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Hanna shows up as her brother, Jonathan, who is so Scottish and not doing a great job not being Scottish. Yeah. Like, every is like, oh, my fucking sister. And it's like, yeah, we're both from England. Is uh is this guy some you said the actor's name as if I should recognize him from something that's not the mummy, Steve. Uh he was in uh Four Weddings at a Funeral and, and other stuff. Sliding Doors, the Gwyneth Paltrow movie, I think. Never caught it. Uh, never never caught four weds in a few yeah, either. Yeah. Surprisingly, the boring guy was boring everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he is uh, Evelyn's brother and all around opportunistic wimp, as my notes say. <laughs> Um, and he has come in because he has claimed he found an artifact, uh, and it turns out he stole it from Brendan Fraser. Um, and inside, you know, Evie uh, opens this uh, little box, and there's a map in it leading them to the city of the dead. Mm. And then this dude, they, they pull out this map like they got out of a fucking Happy Meal. It's 7,000 years old. It would turn, <laughs> I know. It would turn to sand. They said dude, like they're fucking. But yes. 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 Yeah. But yes. Like they're fucking going to wipe ketchup and French fry <laughs> grease on this thing. I would love to if they just like tried to put gloves on before they tried to handle it. That would make some sense. <laughs> but it will still turn to dust. Well, oh, yes, for brilliant, sure. dear sister. Some kid finished the maze before we got here. So we know the direct route. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, Evie. The answer is fries. Oh, I found the, the mummy. Look, it's right here. <laughs> spelled backwards. Oh, fuck. <laughs> He's not the butler from the... He's the butler from Richie Rich. Oh, yes, he is. Yes. Oh, That's what wow, I was thinking Wow, really? Yes. Not, the, not the brother, the, the British guy who we'll meet later. Yeah. Is that the, the, the yeah, brother yeah, yeah. from... Bloody, oh, yeah, okay. Th yes. Yeah, all right. Bloody hell, the map only leads to a mummified mayo McCheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's exactly what should happen to that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that, you know, like, culture is ending around us, obviously. These Happy Meal maps will be worth something and lead people to real treasure, which will be fucking... <laughs> non-perishable food dude yeah. you just made me think of y'all remember that cinemania documentary about like the freaks in new york city who go yes. to like four movies a day right oh They're, no i gotta see this it's oh good. what oh steve i haven't oh. seen it either. cabin you never saw it no, i never saw this one. Oh, you guys it is the it is an a plus look at these fucking people yeah. experience you know, chris cabin by the way you will recognize people in that movie i'm sure <laughs> I, I will. you, you def 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 def
you're not in it, but Cabin, you know a man who is interviewed in that movie. Oh, really? Great. Yes. <laughs> um, it's insane. Steve, there's an old lady who gets kicked out of MoMA and banned for life, and they film her coming back in wearing a disguise trying to see a movie. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm watching this movie maybe tonight. <laughs> you have to. Oh, I can't. Okay, so there's... I don't want to spoil it too much, but there was a guy in that movie that is so proud of the fact that he has collected all of the McDonald's Jurassic Park collector's cups. <laughs> Holy I'm fuck. Steve, I'm telling you, it's real Steve. loser town shit, dude. I, I, it's awesome. Steve, Steve might, don't start watching it right now. Don't say, you do I, it. I might bow out of the rest of this episode. I'll give you my rec- recommendation now. You can edit it in. I swear to God, Steve, if we're sitting here 10 minutes from now and I'm like, another thing about Arnold Vosloo, and I fucking hear that movie on in the background, he just bursts that's unprofessional. Out, he just bursts out laughing in the middle of us talking about the plot. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that guy. Uh, oh yes, yeah, Cinemania, absolute recommend. All but right. uh, 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 the we- our friend, the Weezing the Juice guy, burns half the map because like he's secretly in on it again. Like yeah. he, this thing touches fire. Like come on, <laughs> it's come insane on, that everybody. it doesn't. It's insane it doesn't go up in half a second. And I love the Weezing the Juice guy is definitely like, oh, what a shame. It's too bad it didn't burn all the way out. Like not trying to cover up at all. He's like, it's for the best. You should not fucking go there. He's trying his best to give him like this warning or whatever. Uh, so so Rachel Vice is like, fuck, we got to go to this place and follow this map. Let's go find the dude who you got this from, you know? And he's like, okay, cool. It's just at this bar. And then you cut to the Cairo prison and he's like, well, maybe it wasn't a bar. And I don't understand when they had this interaction. Did anybody else catch it? No, it's really unclear. I think like, well, was the brother like touring the jail and he fucking lifted it from him? No, no. They, it was they were in a bar together before he got arrested. Oh, I see. There was a see, bar brawl, he says. Okay, so this reeks of deleted scenes though, because that's a lot of like how did brendan fraser it's been three years how did he wind up in jail why does he have fucking speaking of uh jumanji why does he have fucking robin williams hair in this movie (laughs) well that's the thing (laughs) you know how long has he been in there like what are we talking about it's when and like show us the fucking bar fight show us how he got out of the desert he was left for dead you know what i'm picturing it as eric honestly is um in is it is it uh where is it in the indiana jones world where marion is doing shots in the bar that's raiders oh, that, it's in yeah, raiders, it's raiders right yeah. okay um it should have been something like that right it's like brendan fraser's like drinking with all these fucking dudes or something and like jonathan lifts it from him or something like that right. like show us that scene you can have some I action mean, in there we're already almost aggressively copying indiana jones for par- portions of this film just go all the way exactly dude just do it i just had a question about Weezing the Juice guy (laughs) vis-a-vis, I love this, Uh, vis-a-vis working with Brendan Fraser. Do you think they were talking about Encino Man? Oh, for sure. Like, have you (laughs) talked to Pauly lately? (laughs) Oh, no one asked about talking to Pauly, dude. I think they were asking about Mitzi before they were asking about Pauly. Speaking of someone frozen and left behind in time, Pauly Shore. (laughs) Hey, buddy, could, saw you doing the mummy, and there's a couple of weaselly scared characters. I could do either one, buddy. Hey, hey did you hear that Sean Astin's going to be in Lord of the Rings? Pretty good, huh? <laughs> I'm good for him. Good guy. <laughs> oh, you're right, because Fellowship was like, what, 2001? Yeah, it's two years away. Oh, they must have been talking about Lord of the Rings on the set of The Mummy, guaranteed. The um, This is everybody's first Rachel Vice joint that they remember, right? Yep. Like yeah, this is. I think yeah, and this is her breakout. I mean, and she, you know, she wound up being like this amazing, amazing actress. I mean, she's she's had an up and down career for sure. She, now she's in a, in a height. I think she is one of the best, though, to me. Like, yes. I I I will watch a movie almost only because she's in it sometimes. For sure. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of why. Well, no, I sh- I was about to say. Sebastian Lelio's uh, disobedience. It's her and Rachel McAdams. She's really great in that. Um, she's sadly always like the like dead or like dying wife. Like yes. the constant gardener. She she's very good in it, but she's like the the dead wife and yeah. the fountain too. You guys should start like a, a Rachel Weiss podcast. Weiss in the juice. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, <laughs> Weiss in the juice. <laughs> Welcome back to Weiss in the juice. We would be explaining at the start of every single episode the title of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we can uh, we can cameo uh, Polly Shore saying it and then yeah. use it as the intro. There you go. There you go I mean, yeah. she's she's great in so much shit. I love that she's working 
uh, multiple times now with uh, Mr. Yorgos Lanthimos. Yes. Because she's fucking great in The Favorite. She's great in The Lobster. Oh, man, but there's some... there's some. St- she was in Aragon. She was in The Lovely Bones. She's in Oz the Great and Powerful, dude. One of the worst things Sam Raimi's ever done in his life, if not thee. Fred Claus, stay tuned for sure. Ooh. Oh, no. I still haven't. Still happy. I also still haven't seen The Oz Great and Powerful. Well, you're, you're I gonna... saw that uh, at the... Um, it was actually Zinkfeld. crazy. Yeah, I saw it at the Ziegfeld. Yeah. Me and uh, Chelsea and I took my younger sister, and it was like she was visiting the city. So I was like, "Behold, a great New York <sighs> movie palace!" And then we watched fucking Oz the Great and Powerful. Isn't it crazy? We know each other so well that I remembered where you saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty great, dude. I have to say, it was kind of flattering. <laughs> um, this, but yeah, I mean, and, and again, actually looking, and now I'm just looking at our IMDb, and I looked, opened a picture, and I'm like, "There's those eyebrows." Like you do miss them. Yep. They're they're very it's, expressive and important to her face. It, they really are, and it's fucking ridiculous that they had to like modify her for this man, movie. Man, there are a lot of stay tunes on here. Holy <laughs> oh, you're shit. just you're just going through the filmography, yeah, Kevin. A chain reaction. We're gonna do one day for Hold sure. Hold on a second. Let's do a month, right? Why isn't the juice month? <laughs> Why yes, isn't the juice? actually, if we could. All right, that's a great idea. That's this Great way we don't idea. have to explain it to everybody, but we could do a Weiss in the Juice Month because Chain Reaction <laughs> is definitely on there. I'm telling you right now, Fred uh, Claus. Fred, Fred Claus. Claus is definitely on Ooh, there. Dream House. Oh, Dream House. Absolutely. That's trash. Honestly, you know what? The Mummy Returns is a way worse movie than this. That could be in Weiss yes. in the oh, Juice yeah, yeah. Month. Runaway Jury is trash. She's in Envy with Ben Stiller and Jack oh, Black. Oh. I don't I know mean, what she, I mean. I, I think she's she's a great. I don't know what she's doing anywhere near a comedy. Honestly, like just do not. And yeah. she's, she's fine and funny, you know, but all that stuff. But like, just not something that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then well, she, as t- oh yeah, Dreamhouse. There it is, Kevin. You were right. Um, but yeah, oh, that's four. <laughs> and Oz. We have four I mean, weeks. Oh, and, oh, of course. Yeah. All right. There we go. <laughs> Why of the Jews could totally have. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we got to the bottom of that. <laughs> uh, so they, they're breaking out Brendan Fraser. He's got this huge wig on because he has to. Yeah. And then they have to. Uh, is this when the I'm Too Sexy montages when they cut his hair and wash him? <laughs> I wish, dude. <laughs> Instead, of, I'm sitting here like, why is he being sentenced to death? Oh, man. If you got like a I'm I'm so sexy, but like on a violin <laughs> while like old timey scissors are trying. <laughs> to cut his hair <laughs> oh fuck that would be pretty great it's him coming out in all different archaeologist outfits and her and john han are like no no yes yes <laughs> picking the different kinds of heroin he's gonna take on the voyage oh god from the local medicine man yeah, it's medicine <laughs> uh so yeah so he is sentenced to death by hanging he is indeed hanged in this film uh, but his neck doesn't break. He almost died here, by the way. They, they had to resuscitate him because they fucked this up. That's oh according to I, the IMDb Tribune. I read that today. And it's just like, I'm like, is that true? Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. But, is that you know, true? It, might, it might be. I, like, I was would... it mentioned, you know, do you think it was mentioned on like a commentary or something? Sure. Or just somebody like, oh, my gosh. You know, well, that's, a great famously... talk show. that's a great talk show story. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Something to bring to the couch. But but what exactly. was Steve? Wh- why did they need? Why did they like have a stunt person and like their back to them, like yes. holding the thing, and just have a one shot of him like looking like he's suffocating? And I'll tell you, Kevin, that's a great question you bring up, especially because one of the uh, effects things that I wanted to point out and praise this movie for is the. Uh, the thing where uh, it's supposed to be Imhotep, which is Arnold Vosler's mummy character. Imhotep is sneaking into Rachel Weiss's bedroom and he can turn into sand with this movie, which whatever. But he <laughs> he turns into sand and the effect is they're just shooting a bunch of sand through a keyhole and then they cut to the bed and there's Arnold Vosloo. There's no like terrible CGI, yeah. right? It's just a great old school like here's bella lugosi but before that there was just a bat puppet you know it's that kind of a thing and it was really rad why couldn't they just use the magic of film <laughs> editing to not hang your fucking movie star <laughs> that's right that's right brendan suffer <laughs> suffer oh yeah you're close aren't you cuts <laughs> 
<laughs> he's hot as fuck in this movie. He's oh, like, oh, oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, get out of town, dude. He's, he's, it's the best he's ever looked is in this. Like, I think uh, on top of uh, Encino Man, he looks better in this movie. And I think yeah. he's perfect for this movie. He gets it. He gets everything just right. It's like, it's square jaw. There's a wink everywhere. I don't know who could do this exact movie better, Which even is, though I'm not crazy about really it. Really good yelling. Yes. Lots yep. of yelling, and he does it well. And he hits all of his comedic moments very well, I think. Because Brendan Fraser is, I mean, he's the perfect guy for this kind of a role. I mean, he reminds you of, like, the jock in high school that was, like, he, like, broke the stereotype and was, like, friendly with everybody. Yeah. And, like, just a nice, big, lovable dude kind of a thing. And, like, this is the kind of, like, not asshole action star that is great to watch, you know? I really wish he hadn't like massively hurt his back or on one of these movies. What was that story he told like kind of recently how he like fucked up his back horribly. And that's why when everybody was like, where'd Brendan Fraser go? He was like not able to work. Yeah, he's I mean, he's good. I mean, really, really good. What the best part of that Doom Patrol show, which I'm slowly getting through and I'm, I'm actually quite enjoying. But it's it, he's he is like the reason to watch that show for sure. He's, but he's just doing a voice of a robot. Yes, right? but I mean, his, his, the voice works fantastic. That's he, pretty cool he, to know, though. He is good in uh, the sense, I think, canceled Rectify, mm. which is a great show, and he's got a really good small role Was that in it. that show where that guy's, like, released from jail after a long yep. time, and the whole first episode is him, like, jerking off and going, like, mm, mm. I, 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 I forgot <laughs> <Pardon> that. <me. laughs> I it's forgot like that a, part, but maybe. He was also like, on The Affair recently. Oh, yeah. is that right? That's another yeah. Showtime property I that's, ignore. That's right. <laughs> I mean, but you know, he had missteps just like anybody else. I'm looking at you, George of the Jungle. Stay tuned for that. Saw that shit in the theaters. They save him. Uh, she barters with this guy who's like the warden or whatever, and basically says, "Hey, I'll give you 25 percent of the treasure if you do if, if you let this guy go, and we'll find we'll just go on a fun treasure hunt." Yeah, exactly. So it's like, so we are we're going on the treasure hunt. We're looking for the book of Amun Ra. Evie wants to find it. You know, it's made of gold supposedly, uh, and we are we're going. To, is this, is this supposed to be the Nile? By the way, I assume. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, we're going I mean, down a river. The way this opens with the pyramids and the Sphinx, let's it's it's the Nile. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. They don't specify. No, I know, but I'm just saying how obvious they are with their cultural touchstones in this film. Sure, sure. Then they're on this boat with uh, a competing team of archaeologists, the League of Hunks, that I will call these guys. Dude, the League of Hunks are some of the dumbest characters. All (laughs) all four of these actors look like they've gotten the third base with Elaine Bennis. Like, they all look like (laughs) Seinfeld (laughs) hunks. You're you're (laughs) totally right. Every one of these American uh, explorers is sponge-worthy. Yeah, no. No, no, there's one guy, and they, it's it's okay because all League of Punks have to have one dud. <laughs> yes. uh, but there's one, I know exactly who you're going to say. <laughs> one guy who looks like Jeremy Piven plus about fifty pounds. Uh, <laughs> say, wait a second. So just say how he dies. Uh, he dies. He's the last of the hunks to die. Yeah, he's the he's the dude who's like murdered in the street. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yep, that's exactly who I thought you were going to say. Yeah, and he's also the guy who stepped on the bug in A Sound of Thunder. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. But yeah, this gang of nerdy hunks, uh, they are being led by, uh-oh, Benny is alive. Mm. Uh, and, and this is where the guy from uh, uh, Richie Rich and Jumanji and previous episode Anaconda as well. This guy worked a lot in the 90s. Uh, he's like their, their uh, expert, their Egypt, Egyptologist expert kind of a guy. Right. Uh, who did he play in um, Anaconda? He's like in the, Anaconda. He's like the he played the uh, posh British guy, the guy who hosted the the show. They gotcha. Were doing. Okay. Okay. Um. So yeah. So these hunks uh, and our team of heroes are on this steamship. Um. And we see there's a shot of some dudes rowing a boat towards the steamship. Uh. So we we guess that you know this ship is about to be boarded here. And this is when they're the most like. And I mean, this is almost. Uh, 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 Last Crusade, like shot for shot, like they, you know what I mean. Like we're not do. It's just this this league of dudes like fucking up uh, this archaeology thing. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah. yeah. They eventually the the ship goes on fire, but like this this set piece, the one at the beginning, like I I think the action is pretty solid in this movie, and it's it's a breath of fresh air from the pirates movies, which got confusing. Because they leaned into the CGI for the battles in those, and this it's like the sword fights and shit. 
Yeah, I mean, the editing in this movie, the way that they, <clears throat> you know, the editing overall, but the editing, the action editing specifically is much better because it's much more traditionally paced. So I was thinking exactly this, Eric, when I was watching it again, like, I can watch this and comprehend what every I know what everybody is doing in this scene. I, and you know what? That's that's exactly why my rating of this movie has gone up significantly is because I just watched five weeks of pirate movies where I had no <laughs> idea what anything was happening. Everything takes fucking forever. Yep. These yeah. are breezy, fun, winkable action scenes that just don't that are just fun and clear. Totally. Um, so like these dudes attack and whatnot. Uh, I love. Oh man, Rachel Vice fucking jams a candle into that dude's eye. Yeah, he gets it. That's pretty sweet. The brother like in like goofball comedy mode accidentally like kicks this guy, but then the guy falls onto a couch that's on fire. Now he's on fire. <laughs> I do. I, I'm not crazy about Brendan Fraser's two guns. It's a hit, a touch too cool for this movie. I'm I'm on board with it, man. It kind of reminds me of a definite stay tuned Last Man Standing with Bruce Willis. Oh or, yeah, where he's fucking he's got that shootout with the double guns. He's fucking naked in the bathtub, or <laughs> or as I've been calling it, Yo Jim Bo. <laughs> <laughs> or also previous episode, Lara Croft. <laughs> <laughs> Lara Croft. <laughs> Uh, by the way, stay tuned. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Uh, so yeah, the boat's on fire, man. Everybody jumps overboard. Um, but we, so we get to, uh, the city again. Yeah. We, right? we, 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 we make yeah. it there. There's a cool, I, oh yeah. The, uh, the way they get there, I thought was rad. They meet up and like, you know, they're, it's like sunrise or whatever. And you know, uh, they're like, oh, we're about to be shown. Brandon Fraser says we're about to be shown the way. And I, I guess, is it, uh, I mean, it's, I guess, sort of magic, but like a desert um, oasis kind of looking effect. Yeah, mirage you know? kind of a thing occurs where it's like, oh, that's where the thing is. You have to wait for the right time of day to see it kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. What if it's cloudy that morning? <laughs> yeah, I guess it did in your, your SOL, dude. Totally, <laughs> dude. You're just going to fucking put up tent cabin, wait till the sun comes out. Yeah, too bad. <laughs> yeah, pitching a tent, pretty nice. I'm oh, bad. yeah, I'm, I'm pitching a tent in this movie, dude. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, they all they're like racing to get to the city and everything. I do love fucking Kevin J. O'Connor is definitely trampled by a camel in this scene. Dude, he should be dead because he yep. goes under. He went under the wheels, <laughs> like you know, <laughs> under the hooves. <laughs> well, much like a Roger Rabbit, you can't kill a cartoon. Mm. You'd have to kill yeah. Kevin J. O'Connor with the dip. Now That's I'm just true. imagining like in Morton Joe like having a tons of, tons of camels getting milked in a facility. <laughs> oh god, damn, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, they they get to the city and everything. They go into uh, the the temple. There's a great line. They're like, "Well, what was this room for?" And uh, I think it's um, is it Rachel Vice or Jonathan? One of them is like, "This is where they made the mummy." <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the mummy machine, baby. <laughs> no, this is where we're going. The movie, the the, the mummies are going to be here. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah. and, and they're like basically racing against each other. They both kind of hit the same place and it's like all right you go you take well we'll go downstairs that's where the real good stuff is and you guys take the upstairs kind of a thing we right get, right we get a very solid from brendan fraser a good uh here we go again yeah it's yeah. oh right yeah because he's he's returning to the city which i think is also a lot like from the trailer for the second one he says it like early on Oh, is it, is it like a, uh, I got a bad feeling about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we also have like a campfire scene where, where he's described like, oh, the American crew lost a few diggers because of these ancient booby traps that melted them with salt acid. Oh, well, that happens right here because Rachel Weiss is like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll go dig somewhere else. And then like the dude from Jumanji makes all these like day laborers that are with them because the Americans are about to do it. The American guys, I love in this movie, it, they're such yeehaw cowboy idiots. Uh, like, there's a joke on the steamship where, like, you know, they're obsessed with guns. You know, they're shooting at all of these people, and, like, yeehawing and shit. The, it's pretty... The one guy uh, looks like the Game of Thrones actor, uh, Niccolo yes. Costa Wasa, or whatever the fuck his yeah. name is. Yeah, yeah, well, the Great Dane. Yes. The reason is you don't Jamie know, Lannis. the reason you know it's not him is because he's in a movie that you've seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that dude's made some poor choices. His career is insane. <laughs> I mean, most of the fucking people from that show, dude. I mean, look yeah, at it. It's true. Look at it. 
Momoa <laughs> might be on top, actually. Jason Momoa got out easy, like he got out early, yes. so that he could he could build off the cachet of the show. Now that the show is over, everyone was like, "Oh, that was." I, in retrospect, not not the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the League of Hunks remind me very much of uh, speaking of Dracula. Those dudes at the end of Dracula that like are hanging out with Anthony Hopkins, like let's get him, Anthony, let's get oh. him, Van Helsing, yeehaw! Oh, I fucking forgot about that. Yeah, there is a weird team at the end of that movie. There is. Uh, do they all talk like the Roger Rabbit bullets? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's close. It's closer than not, Karis. Honestly. <laughs> okay. All right, let's. I've got six of my friends here to get you, Dracula. <laughs> Listen, son. We, the Order of Boop, knew this day would come where the bullets from Roger Rabbit would try to get Boop. <laughs> boop. <laughs> Betty, Boop, I haven't seen you in years. <laughs> Betty, Boop, I haven't seen you since you fought against the Civil Rights Movement. <laughs> what are you doing on this boardwalk? <laughs> <laughs> We're both on useless, poorly printed T-shirts. <laughs> Oh, I forget who we're supposed to be killing right now. <laughs> oh, oh, Betty Boop, why does your caption have something about oral sex? Children are around. <laughs> Some of those shirts get dirty, dude. Oh, Betty Boop, of course all lives matter, but that ain't the point right now, darling. <laughs> Betty Boop, what are you doing on that T-shirt with Bart Simpson? <laughs> Oh. Betty Boop's telling Saddam to get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Boop says, Ayatollah Asahola. <laughs> oh, the boardwalk. What a horrible place Betty, for American life. Betty, what you doing on Deviant Art? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, so, yeah, we should say the, uh, the, the, uh, the jailer guy decides to go off on his own hunting treasure and he finds uh, this, like, wall of scarab jewel looking things and he starts picking them off one by one and he drops one in the sand and it comes to life and dude this fucking guy gets like a scarab like burrows into his foot and it's like under his skin and it crawls up into his brain and starts making him crazy because it goes i mean here's the thing though you you know for a, sh a fact because it's going up it's like it's like oh fuck oh fuck and it goes past and he's a little relieved for at least a second, like, okay, Absolutely. go go right in my brain. Take me out, dude. Take me out of the game. Yep, he's going to be like, you know what? I'm dead, but thankfully, uh, before I died, my dick wasn't eaten off. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to stab it when it gets to my chest. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> like, half the characters in this movie, I'm like, why didn't you shoot yourself in the head? Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so Eric, this is where those American dudes, uh, the Legion of Hunks, are about to open this panel, and the guy from Jumanji's like, uh, 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 these people that were paying nothing to be here with us, they're the ones that do it. <laughs> and they open it, and their fucking faces start melting off because we are told it was salt acid. Yikes, what a way to go. Pretty, pretty cool death there. Um, and then, yeah, they, they fight uh, Brendan Fraser, Jonathan, and uh, what you call it, and, uh, Rachel Weiss find the mummy underneath. They, they find the, the book upstairs. They find the mummy the, himself. Yeah. And they're like, ah, a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> well they don't it's actually interesting because like she's reading the sarcophagus and you know there's no name on it it says it's literally he that shall not be named uh so it's kind of crap like the whole movie is written like the boring parts of this movie are it's like the right the writer uh, i forget was it summers who wrote this it's him and somebody else i think okay like they must have just read like a travel guide history about like the, the area because it's just like every once in a while they're like did you know that this area of egypt and this <laughs> practice by the pharaohs is this don't you know and like yeah. it's just like they're like yeah, clearly it's... just plotting like yes we did the research yes we're, this is convincing right come on fucking eat it up pigs <laughs> you, know, and you know what dude i was that fucking fat pig at the trough dude <laughs> you want to give me cool ancient egypt factoids like I will listen to that. I will 100% listen okay. to that. By the way, uh, confirmed there were three people with screen story credits. Uh, Mr. Somers, someone named Lloyd Fawnville, and someone named Kevin Jari. Uh, but Somers is the only one with a screenplay credit. Hmm. Yeah. 
Your old passion project, Ron. <laughs> Dude loves mummies, man. What can I tell you? I was looking at now looking at Steven Summers IMDb. He directed uh, and wrote The Revenge of the Mummy, The Ride, a pre-show video that plays uh, before the Universal <laughs> Orlando's Revenge of the Mummy ride. Well, Told you, okay. man. Brandon, Dude loves Brandon mummies. Fraser's in it, dude. Quick question. Yeah. Has anyone taken that ride? I have not. No, I've no, never been to no. Universal. I, I mean, I Me went to neither. Universal as a little kid. I want um, to address it because I know if 15 people on Twitter are going to tweet at us, I can't believe they don't know that ride. I, I've never. <laughs> I been, went there once, and the only time I went there that uh, the movie had not come out yet. So. Ditto. I've never seen. I've never been on the ride, but I do remember, like, very clearly. You remember that, like, scrawl whenever you had a VHS of a Universal movie with like all the good movies in the t- in the letters. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and yeah. like I have that like stamped on my brain forever. <laughs> <laughs> like the, I, like I didn't I hadn't seen Jaws yet, so I just saw a shark. I was like, that's a cool shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, be a better, cool shark. better title for that movie, by the way. Mm. Cool shark. Cool yeah, shark dude. eat. Uh yeah, so there's um the the dudes uh, have their faces melted there, uh, and then this is where uh, the magi dudes roll in again. They start fucking firing on everybody. Brendan Fraser uses a, a stick of dynamite as a bargaining chip, and Oded Fair's like, "All right, fine, <laughs> don't blow everybody up. You have a day to fucking get out of town." Uh, and then there's oh man, you know, not a great scene in the movie. I don't need it because you know what? Like we know what these movies are. They will fall in love eventually. I don't need them fucking drunk uh, on this Glenn Levitt. Yeah. uh, Kind of flirting with each other and everything, especially because the brother finds it in uh the backpack of um I think Kevin J. O'Connor, maybe. No, no, it's uh the the fat guy who died. Oh, it's the jailer guy. Okay. And he like he's like, oh, broken glass. And then is drinking out of the same glass <laughs> bottle? No way I'm putting my fucking mouth oh, in your broken glass. That's I might right now. I might, you know, during quarantine and all, like, yeah. If, if, my, if I somehow break my bottle of whiskey, I'm, I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> but then you get, like, a little bit of salt acid on the tip of that thing. Mm. Like, then all Ooh. of a sudden, Jonathan's out of here, and I'm happy. Well, no, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you know, a little more burn ain't going to hurt nobody. I guess. <laughs> but, Andrew, you, you, you are right that, like, this movie has way too many scenes like this, and it just bogs the whole thing down. I think we go to some hotels later, and it's sort of they're trying to do the Cary Grant thing around the hotel, this and that, and it, it's just too much. It could be a tight 95, and I'd be in a really yeah. good shape. Or even, like, a buck 40, I'm good, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like, she's just wasted, and she, like, almost kisses him and passes out, and, you know, Thankfully, there's a look of like, I'm just not going to do anything here from Brendan Fraser. Sure. Absolutely. Is this the oh, same wait. night that she spots the Americans have the book and she's like, oh, you need the key. And then she steals it and reads the passage. Is this where oh, we well, are? We can just get to that because who sure. cares? But yeah, yeah, yeah. She reads. Here's the thing. Here's a tip. Here's a life lesson, kids. Never read from the Book of the Dead. <sighs> yeah, especially like on site either. You want to take that to a secondary location. Yep. And like, you know, a museum. I don't know, a fucking army barracks. <laughs> like <laughs> so, something that's not the evil uh, city of the dead. Yeah. Kids, like make, never read the Book of the Dead in the city of the yeah, dead. Kids exactly. just take it to a cabin in the woods, right? Exactly, that's where you read yes. the Book of the yep. Dead. It worked out fine for those people. Or listen to it on tape, read by our charming professor. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so I fucking love it right here, though. She reads it, and then, like, the mummy, you see the mummy wake up in uh, back in the tomb, and the Jumanji guy fucking freaks out. He's like, don't read from the book. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of great. Also, question, so when they find this sarcophagus, like, it just falls, and it lands, like, you know, horizontally. Why are we in these movies? Because the same thing happens in the Karloff movie. Why are we opening these sarcophagi uh, while they're standing up? Yeah, that's yeah. Put lay it down, and that's 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 how they. <laughs> these guys are like spring loaded, ready to come out. They got well, bad knees. What do you want? <laughs> bad knees. <laughs> Who's got bad knees? The mummy, Brendan Fraser. He's been Was, running all this time. He hasn't given anybody. He does his. He left his heroin in the boat. <laughs> well, then he definitely shouldn't be lifting up a sarcophagus to position it vertically just to open it. And Rachel Weisz gets hit in the face with a skeleton. Also That's a good true. point. <laughs> so a shit ton of locusts come. They run into the temple. Dude, this first guy that eats shit, this Mr. Burns, this guy, there is an outright, but my glasses! <laughs> jo- oh, joke man. in this movie, It's man. a Velma joke. Yeah, his glasses fall out. And then, well, he doesn't eat shit entirely. 
the oh, mummy right. takes his eyeballs and his tongue. It's yeah, amazing. it's pretty great. And then when oh, he's like, Mr. Burns. He's walking around with like the sockets open. Pretty yeah. cool. It was a pretty great moment, actually. I think Rachel Weiss like walks in on him and she's he's like, my eyes! And she fucking screams. And then like the mummy, the mummy comes out right here. It does not look good. Uh, but then she's like, wait a second, mummy, what's happening? And she turns back to this Burns guy and he's like, also. It cut out my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes look really bad. The I eyes look terrible. The, I, mean, I thought they just put gum over his eyes at first. <laughs> oh, God. Like, like, it doesn't look like a socket. It's like a CGI trying to look like a socket, but it looks like just like a flat panel over it or something. It's but a, it's, right. It's a if socket if there's in, a light in the skull. Chris, if they covered it in blood, it would maybe look okay? Yes. Yes. I mean, also like the mummy. I, I want to press the X button just to get to the next level. Like honestly, like I've seen this 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 uh, cinematic before. We're good now, to go. Well, yep. Steve, I want to ask you a question. You're the resident glasses. Um, now, yes. if you drop your glasses in a hallway mm-hmm. and there's a mummy after you, everyone's running away. Like you would. St- why not just fucking bumble your way? Like run <laughs> no, forward. You, Who cares no, if you hit something? When you get an eye exam and the doctor tells you you need glasses, he gives you some protocol you do. If your glasses fall okay. off, no matter what your vision is, right. you have to fall to your knees and <laughs> and pat the ground nearest you <laughs> right. to find your glasses or exactly. else you might step on them. My gosh. You, My gosh. You won't even have the decision. It's just going to be reflexes when it happens, <laughs> exactly. buddy. So, don't, don't worry I, about it. I would very much appreciate if the mummy had to wear glasses the rest of the movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, he's just, yeah, because he's got Mr. Burns' bad eyes. Right. And then he could do like a, you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, it's weird. But, I mean, like, it's cool that, like, he has to reassemble himself. But not enough Arnold Vosloo. Like, this is what I'm here for, man. Yeah, there is more Vosloo in the second movie. And also, you know what? To... I want I want Vosloo fucking wrapped up in bandages. That's what I want to see. I'm sorry. I, agree. Yeah. I would rather see a fucking person than this fucking, like, Jar Jar Binks skeleton. <laughs> well, I, I will say, though, this is, again, going, like, because in the, the Karloff movie... You've got like the mummy for a little bit, but once that motherfucker, I mean, the same thing happens. Like he eventually just is walking around like Boris Karloff. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, mean it, he just, he builds back th- up. That's the problem with doing this as an action and adventure movie is like the mummy is slow. Yeah. The s- movie's like, it's Wilford Brimley now walking well, is what the mummy <laughs> should be like. This, this is, sl- <laughs> well, the mo- this movie is slow. I guess the mummy is a little fast. Mummy's fast. Mummy saying. moves. But this, you, you take an hour. To get to the fucking mummy, and I guarantee Boris Karloff was busting out those uh, toilet papers earlier. <laughs> Karloff, not so much of a running mummy, though. That's not. Yeah, he's shuffling. Really. He's shuffling. Yeah, but how yeah. long does it take you to see the fucking mummy in in the original? Uh, kind of as long as this. Ah, maybe dang. maybe less because it's a shorter movie. But like percentage of the movie wise, probably the like same. Twenty thirty, yeah. Uh, uh yeah. They, anyway, they narrowly escape. Um, th- there's some. The mummy yells at Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser yells at the mummy. Yada yada yada. They wind up going to some hotel. It's kind of amazing because they they bring like, oh my god, I can't believe what happened to Mister Brooks, whatever that guy is. Like, if we're <laughs> out on the town, we go on vacation. We're doing one of these great shows that we're going to do in the fall. And, yeah. You know, like we go uh, and at the show, someone stabs my eyes out and takes my tongue out. <laughs> I would I would hope. That Show one of on. you would one of you would stick around as opposed to like, yeah, we're going down to the bar. We'll see you later. Steve, you, <laughs> hey, hope Steve, wrong. you need anything or uh, you need anything, Steve, or what? <laughs> I need help. Yeah, you're good, right? <laughs> we're just me and uh, me and Chris and Eric. We're just going to go down. You know, I'd be honest with you. It's probably going to turn into two or three drinks. <laughs> I know they said one. Get but me we had a Irish really... and Tylenol. Steve, it's, it's been a really hard day. Steve, it's going to be fine. We're going to smash a banana in your bowl later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. I need someone to read me a book. Something this... would be nice. Don't, don't worry. This area is really nice. We're just going to leave you here to roll around. <laughs> uh yeah no it does kind of suck that they're like right down to the bar but man this movie i mean because we're like we've been talking the past few days about how we're supposed to be on tour right now we're not and like man they're just drinking in this hotel bar and i was like not only do i miss bars and not only do i miss hotels but boy do i miss hotel oh, bars. hotel bars are super fun oh man oh man uh so there's a there's a dumb argument here we don't have to waste much time on it but like brendan fraser is basically like i'm done 
you know, I told you I was going to fucking get you out there and get you back. That's what I did. We're good to go. And she's like, he's trying to like pack her. This is more of the like monkey business. Yes. Uh, 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 bringing a baby kind of thing where like he's trying to like pack her suitcase for her. She's unpacking it we're, kind of a thing. We're missing the weird Jewish scene with Kevin J. O'Connor. And the religious things when well, he becomes Dude, say, that is... well, Chris, I wouldn't say I'm missing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I w- I noticed it, Kevin, and I was happy to breeze by in my notes. But go right ahead. It's a huge moment because it's when he becomes indebted to Imhotep, and yeah, he's now his agent. The... Well, it's, yeah. it's, it starts off as a totally fine gag. He has a cross, and he's like, "You," and it's like, you know, the power of Christ, yada yada yada. And that the mummy keeps coming, so now he's got all these other religious idols, and it's like mm-hmm. going in all sorts of different languages, hoping one of them will stick. You know, it but fits the character. The, the mummy notices he's got Betty Boop on his T-shirt and stops. <laughs> Sorry. The mummies, the mummies are ah oh, <laughs> Betty Boop Boardwalk T-shirt. G T L. No, but then he's like, oh, he starts uh, speaking Hebrew, and he's got a uh, Star of David, and he's like, ah, the, and this is all in a subtitle. He's like, ah, the language of slaves, you'll come in handy. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, well, thank also you. the more of an ick factor. If we're gonna backtrack and talk about this scene, in the middle of both of those options you guys talked about, he holds up a tiny Buddha. And fucking, as the oh. subtitles call it, start spouting Asian gibberish. Oh, oh, no. It's quite terrible. See our fucking Scooby-Doo <laughs> Animation Damnation episode, by the way, for more of that shit. But that's definitely going on in this movie. And he's definitely fucking doing a voice a little bit. Mm-hmm. Hachi machi, it's, ladies it's and gentlemen. Still the Clinton Wild West years, <laughs> <laughs> Uh But yeah, so they're in this bar where we cut to, like, there's this dude, Winston, who's like this British imperialist, like Royal Air Force officer leftover guy. I like this character. He's drunk. He fucking fuck. rules. Yeah, he represents the decay of the empire and the set, you know, the, the, the end, yeah. it's definitely ending. He's like yeah. British Pat Hingle a little bit. Yeah. Definitely British Pat Hingle, Ac- dude. Uh, actually Bingle. named Winston. <laughs> Just to yeah, give it a little no, punch, like just it's totally great. Winston Churchill's a piece of shit now, so <laughs> always uh, nice. well. Depend- but- it depends on who you ask, man. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> what do you think Gary Oldman would have to say? <laughs> that I would rather not know. Yeah. Oh wait, who cares? <laughs> ask anyone from India. I'm sure they'll have a good uh, 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 retort for you. <laughs> um, but so yeah, so Imhotep and Benny find this fucking Burns dude and finish the job on this guy. <laughs> Everyone's getting to like the mummy's power is he turns everybody into the Mrs. Bates corpse from Psycho. Yes. Everyone's getting fruit cellared in this movie. <laughs> I, I think it's really funny how the mummy's like, no, 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 I really like that first guy. Yeah, no, I'm going to finish <laughs> my body with that first guy. We're going to have to go find that one specific <laughs> guy. I can't be whole until I get Mr. Burns. It's something, something they're holding on to jars that have his essence or something. Oh, that's true, because the Americans, they took all these jars from the, the city, and yeah. apparently it's like, oh, this is all the great stuff I need. <laughs> yeah, it's all they're all like cat-shaped cookie jars or, or so I don't or, know. Or, yeah. Kevin J. O'Connor if you can get me more hunks I will eat the hunks <laughs> but these are hunks we have right here I would just eat these hunks now go get me the hunks bring me the hunks he brings back Wayne Knight and like, what did I tell you what did I tell you <laughs> Yeah. See, nobody cares. <laughs> uh, so they they're they're about to like do a shot to Mr. Burns or something like that back at the bar, and everyone like takes a sip and spits it out immediately, and they're like, "Oh, we know that taste precisely. We're drinking blood for some reason." <laughs> yes, like I love it. Like ah, not again. Uh, but so the, what they're realizing here is, as um, I think Oded Fair's character mentions later on, that like. Or maybe has already mentioned it. I don't know. Uh, that with the return of Imhotep will also be the ten plagues of Egypt. Mm. Uh, so all of the water of Egypt uh, turning to blood, and we thankfully have the character of Jonathan, who 
whenever the next like plague thing happens, this motherfucker like recites from the text, yes. like what the actual lines are, like referring to the specific, like when the you know the the bugs come or like when the boils come, see, you know, like this guy's right there to quote scripture. See, we could do the research. We could do all the research. We got it all here. <laughs> just, just shut your fucking mouth to watch the movie. How about that shit? I didn't see any fucking frogs, man. I want those frogs. Yeah, yeah. nary a frog. Big problem. Yeah, and the Amy Mann song too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's <laughs> fucking so uh, William H Macy climbing up a fucking side of a house, falls over. <laughs> oh, here's a dumb thing: the mummy's scared away by cats. Yes, well, I mean, also, so yeah, the, the mummy's about to get Rachel Vice, and like they're shooting at him, nothing's happening. This white cat comes out, who rules, hisses, it's hilarious, and he he he, he leaves. That cat, by the way, is now part of the team. Every time, every time we're going somewhere, yep. I'm bringing that fucking cat. It works. Yep, that's true. Because Brendan Fraser literally uses the cat a few minutes later as a weapon. Yeah. And I was like, put that fucking mangy animal <laughs> in a bag and take it with you on this adventure, dude. They that's should, all you need. They should recruit like a cat lady, like a local cat lady yes. in Egypt, and like she could like throw the cats at him. <laughs> <laughs> like that Simpsons character. She's just like sitting on a camel riding around with a sack <laughs> hanging off of it, hucking cats at people. Emma, great. <laughs> Emma, we need the cats. <laughs> no, not the, not the old newspaper, just the cats. <laughs> Uh, there's a great moment here where so that we we see that Imhotep is following the Jumanji guy around. Meanwhile, uh, Brendan Fraser uh, as Rick finds Benny is in this hotel as the mummy's like lit laying siege to it uh and he fucking throws a chair across the room at this dude it's breathtaking this chair toss <laughs> it's great he's like lifting him up like the undertaker part trying to like decapitate him in a ceiling fan that's kind of fun i loved every second of brendan fraser bullying kevin j o'connor in this movie it's fucking great um but yeah so uh benny uh as it turns out benny and the mummy are looking for the book of the dead mm. of course yeah uh the mummy guy is murdered, uh, and at this or the uh, mummy, the Jumanji guy is murdered. Totally sucked dry, uh, and now he's like kind of so almost wait, wait, did, looking did, like Arnold Vosloo. He didn't last five seconds. What you're saying? <laughs> no, 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 no. He did not. He could not. No with one this, can last five seconds with this <laughs> mummy. You won't last five seconds. And in this hotel, Imhotep goes on a real suck fest here, dude, because. <laughs> After he sucks off the Jumanji guy, then yeah. he goes back to who I I titled American Hunk Three. Yeah, yeah. By the and way, he's, it's totally fine to suck off American hunks. You're just uh, saying, like, it's oh fine. yeah, there's no I mean, no problem with that. Yeah. Not at all. That's no, a, I'm just saying that's what's that's literally what's happening it, in the movie. And it's a direct line from uh, "This Ain't the Mummy." XXX. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one guy, Kevin, you're you're uh, the guy you claim is the ugliest one in the group. Yeah. Uh, he's the guy who has the line. He's like, so here the re- the mummy's hunting down all the people that were in that temple and sucking them dry. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, you said it first, movie. <laughs> Betty Boop got loose. And she's sucking everyone dry. <laughs> oh, no. uh, but yeah, this dude, this dude is the guy. He kind of looks like I don't know the guy's name, but he is Kurt Russell's son. Who was in like Everybody Wants Some, among other things? Okay, yeah, he's the guy that we also said looks like uh, Nicholas Custer Waldo, or whatever the hell. That oh, is. oh, okay, so it's <laughs> <Waldo>. this dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, so, I don't know uh, what it is, but I think I, that's just funny. He should play Jay Waldo. in there. Jamie Lannister. That's yes. his name. <laughs> so this dude, the Great Dane himself, uh, not himself actually, this guy who looks like him, uh, he's whipping this gun around, like kind of playing around, just gets sucked dry. <laughs> yep. just, su- just suck dry the mummy knocks on the door suck dry don't worry about it uh, <laughs> but then- I, I, I feel so immature this episode maybe it's quarantine madness but lord almighty suck wow. and dry it took you 10 years to finally feel immature on this show huh? <laughs> you know yeah, interesting I'm, I'm finally embarrassed <laughs> Uh, but so th- this is the part where they have the the practical effect of the sand going through the door because this is where he goes after Evie um, again, and this is this is where Brendan Fraser's like, "Hey, Ugo or whatever," <laughs> and fucking throws the cat in his face, and Arnold Vosloo's like, "Ew, a cat!" Just runs away. Again, I'm putting that cat on a leash, and we're hanging out. You know, Absolutely. we're we're all, we're all going around. 
And you can totally uh, pare down your team at this point, too. <laughs> yes, exactly. You don't need all these hunks. Oh, yeah. man. There just, should have been a Halloween Garfield special where he just bullies the shit out of the mummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, come on, mummy. Don't you want some lasagna? Oh, you got some spaghetti sauce on your toilet paper. Your breath stinks, the mummy. I'm a Garfield <laughs> joke. <laughs> Yeah, it's the only time Garfield ever hissed. And what? then it just cuts to Orson the pig and the barnyard animals. <laughs> oh, segment. yeah. For six they're, they're... minutes, nobody could use. I always like those little no, uh, the like barnyard friends. Yeah. It was a nice like... break from the fucking monotony of Garfield's everyday existence. I don't remember anyone uh, being sucked off on it, but it did have a cock <laughs> as a character. It's true. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they are like trying to get out of this hotel. Meanwhile, they realize there's a group of folks chanting Imhotep, and here's the boils and sores. These guys now are, we're told, are Imhotep slaves. They're basically like the living dead mm. trying to break down the door to the museum. The whole thing is, you know, the black, the, we're told the black book brings people back to life. Yes. And the gold book that they need to find can kill the mummy is the Well, idea. you miss the part where uh, Imhotep goes around and stokes all of their worst fears and says he's going to make Egypt great again. And now mm-hmm. these people are indebted to him. No matter That's what right. he does, they will just follow him around chanting. Imhotep, <laughs> get him out of here. Imhotep. Betty Boop is here. <laughs> folks, folks, I hate cats. I hate them. I hate all of them. Oh, they maybe that's suck. the way to do it. It's just fucking sho- shove a cat in that dude's face. Maybe that's the end of it. <laughs> oh, fuck. That'd be awesome. Horrendous allergy to cats. They're the no, symbol I'm... of death, folks. The symbol of death. Uh, wait, I'm being grabbed by a pussy, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they, uh, Rachel Weiss reads from, um, the other book that apparently this gold book is inside the statue of Horus, which I appreciate this, even though it seems like a little bit of busy work in the movie. All we have to do is go back to Hominoptera. Yes. It's like, again, compared to those pirates movies where it's like, oh, here's a clue to go to this place. That's only a clue to go to this place to do this thing. And that's a clue to go to this place. This is like, it's fucking two locations. It's Hominoptera <laughs> and it's Cairo. Uh, and that's it. The, uh, the, the, the ancient scroll says, uh, we built that set. We better use it. <laughs> <laughs> Written by the ancient wise one, the production designer. <laughs> And now we're reading from the budget. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so this uh, there there's a little bit of a car chase here. They all like jump into Jonathan's car, and uh, the uh, the mummy and his goons like you know get the like, descend on the car, trying to pull him out or whatever. And then this is where Chris's favorite character, the ugliest man in America, <laughs> falls out of the car. And yeah, I thought uh, for a minute I was going to get a Shaun of the Dead rip him open yeah, right there. Yeah, that'd be dope. Situation. Well, that's because that's, that's a question I texted you guys when I was watching it. Like, are these guys actually zombies? Like, is this dude being eaten? Like, how is he actually meeting his end? Well, he's getting sucked dry. That's because that's it's the last <laughs> yeah. per- No, it is. It's the last person to get sucked dry. No, so, I'm suck him dry. I'll pay your medic. Uh, you'll pay, I'll pay your lawyer's <laughs> fees. <laughs> no, we seen the juice guy gets ripped apart. That well, that's sorry. I'm I'm conflating deaths right here. We got two deaths back to back. Yes, the guy, the uh, the ugliest guy in the world. He <laughs> just gets he just gets killed by Imhotep. He is sucked dry just like everybody else. Okay. And at that point, it now he looks just it's full Arnold Vosloo. There's no uh, uh, CGI in his face or anything like that. Because for a while, it's that obnoxious like it's mostly Arnold Vosloo, except they think it's cool if you can see through his cheek. No. Nah. I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> really? I preferred I just, it to the I would prefer that to the whole like skeletal zomp zomp. Oh, you know, I the, I definitely prefer it to that. I just yeah. think like the CGI isn't quite there for that kind of shit, but like that's what we were doing with CGI around then. Like you liked looking through things, but this movie specifically cuz like the mummy here's the thing, like you could make that mummy totally practical effects from the jump, except yes. someone was like wouldn't it be cool if you could see through parts of him? Yeah, and the answer, and the no. answer is no. Yeah, I mean it's it's always I mean, no. This That's is never also cool. industrial light and magic, so it's also like they yep. were promising the fucking sky to everyone in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're totally right. Um, but so they all escape into the sewer after that dude eats shit. Well, uh, uh, very they important. kidnap. Yeah. Well, yeah, they they kidnap Rachel Vice. Yeah, she gets kidnapped. She does not make it. The mummy uh, tries to like. The mummy's doing some bad lying right here because he's like, yeah, if you give me Rachel Vice, I'll totally let all of her friends live. Definitely. Don't worry about that. I'm a cool 
on me. What are you talking about? <laughs> Look, on. I'm just a traditionalist. I'm not a racist or a hate monger. I'm just a traditionalist. I'm going to steal this woman to be my bride. I definitely won't kill any of you people. Yeah, I'm a cool mummy. You got you kids can drink in the fucking tomb as long as you do it here. I prefer you do it here than out. Who knows what you're getting into? We, we can screen those uh, the movies of the trains here. I'm cool. We can get some new stuff. New yeah. stuff here. Got the new Lumiere brothers right here. <laughs> um, but uh, this is where also Weez and the Juice guy is like. No, no, no. Like, you get out of here. I'll fend them off, which is totally pointless. He could have just as easily jumped down with these people. But you got to start killing off this huge army of folks, I guess. Yeah. It's, a, it's the thing. The same thing happens to Odette Fair Lair where, where it's like, no, no, white characters. I'll fend them off. You go. Yeah, totally. Uh, the mummy, as he's going away, uh, says... Or is it, uh, no, yeah, live, Oded Fair is like, no, Brendan Fraser, don't kill these people. Live today, fight tomorrow. Brendan Fraser looks this mummy dead in the eye and goes, I'll be seeing you again. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty badass, dude. So they have to get back to Hominoptra. They hire our favorite uh, British drunk, Winston Halleck, we're told. And you know what? When you need quick transportation into a dangerous situation, you want an elderly drunk pilot with nothing to live for. Who's near death? It was they, near death as well, yeah. They didn't, like, think this thing through. Because, like, Oded Fair and J- John Hanna are just tied to each wing. Like, they're fucking, I don't even, like, they're guns, essentially. Like, there should be a second plane. Like, come on. What are we talking about? Yeah, maybe he's got, like, an old shithead, like, buddy of his yes. or something oh. that can take more people. In or Oded Fair knows how to fly a plane. And he's got two planes, yada, yada, yada. Oh, yeah. la-di-da. Steve wants two planes in the middle of the <laughs> desert. <laughs> not one, not enough. I think this is where the movie starts to, like, jump the shark a little bit with the fucking sand tornado shit and, like, the mummies controlling the whole world. Da, 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 da. And I honestly, I started to zone out. And I feel like... Really? I got bogged down with the middle of this movie and i was just like okay let's get there well the ending fight the fucking mummy already the end (laughs) yeah the ending gets really clumsy and it's like the last level in the video game and there's one too many things we got to worry about for me uh yeah yeah. um i disagree but we'll we'll continue Uh, no, stop the show! <laughs> <laughs> After um, ten years, we're cancel. We're can- self cancellation <laughs> on this one. I, I mean, I, whatever, dude. I fucking dig on the sand tornado. The guy Winston's like, I've never seen one that big before. You realize, and while I think the tornado thing is cool, this is dumb. This is how the mummy. This is how Imhotep is taking. Rachel Weiss and uh, Kevin J. O'Connor with him, like they're wrapped up in the tornado because he just like the tornado like poops them both out. And I was like, ah, that's not that's not <laughs> aren't, cool. Aren't you just vomiting a yes. lot after that? And aren't your bones liquid? Yeah. But all you see is Kevin J. O'Connor like spit out a bunch of sand like patooey patooey. It's like, no, you'd be dead or like you would be able to breathe. Your eyes would be ruined for like ever should, should look should like cut. bruce davidson at the end of x-men <laughs> yes <laughs> i mean they should cut to the inside and for whatever reason like you know you know the reason is mummy magic uh, oh sure they're just like sitting there on like a couch or something <laughs> it's like well this is actually pretty comfortable climate control how about that but yeah they're spit out it's kind of stupid whatever um but so then the mummy is like oh man there they are like he spots the plane and you know rachel vice is like oh O'Connell. <laughs> Everyone is yelling fucking O'Connell in this movie, yeah. man. <sighs> kind of annoying. Yeah, we're not happy about it. This dude does die. Uh, the the oh, old, yeah. old, your old friend there. He just got in. He's they're like, let's go, let's go off on this adventure. Come on. Oh no. But he know that's the thing that gets him fucking horny for it, though. Steve is he's like, Brandon Fraser says something about like it's very dangerous. There's a good chance we're not going to survive, and the guy is like. Did you just tell me I may finally fucking die out here? Yeah, let's do it. Like, he gets totally into it. So his wish is fulfilled because the plane crashes and uh, Oded Fair, Brandon Fraser, and this uh, the brother there are alive. And this poor old man is just dead in the cockpit, covered in sand. Well, guys, we have to do it for the old drunk now. <laughs> That's really what we have to. We got it. This guy died for us with this old. I, what's his name? Uh, do you guys remember his name? They should they should use the book of the dead on him and try to resurrect him. Oh, nice, oh. big fat mummy. And then he'd be like, "Oh man, oh look out, it's the BFF." 
It's a big fat mummy. <laughs> Coming to drink your alcohol. <laughs> You can most definitely hear him coming. <laughs> oh, that's a not ni- so much a shuffle as a stomp and a gate. Oh no, that's like a '90s gross-out comedy, and like it's using its own paper to wipe its ass. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He uses his own wrappings as his as his toilet paper for sure. Oh man, he's like he's a bad joke, and it would be like, oh look, my left leg's bigger than my right leg because I had diarrhea last week. <laughs> you know what? Let's not kill him. It, he looks like he's gonna kill himself. <laughs> this is not good. I do, and also like you know they go out for wings, and like everyone's using oh, yeah. the mummies, the big fat mummies, bandages <laughs> for, to wipe their mouths. You know, it makes sense. Dude, that's his job. He gets a job. All right, it's a different scenario. It's the mummy. He gets a job at Applebee's. Mm-hmm, sure. Yeah, of course. And yeah. his job is just go around and offer his services as being like a moving paper towel rack, <laughs> like a napkin holder for people eating fucking endless riblets or whatever they sell at that some, restaurant. Some big guy. I guess the guy from the Order of the Boop goes and takes him and <laughs> takes the whole big fat mummy into the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> This'll do. Blows his nose into it. Oh, and one last final insult for this poor old man. After he dies in this plane crash, the cra- the fucking plane itself sinks into quicksand. Yeah, it's a thing where it's like Brendan Fraser's like, oh shit, he had a son or something. I should really tell somebody when I get... Please remind me to tell someone when, when we get back that that guy's definitely dead and out here. He's Some- like, all oh, right, I remember like two months ago, I was back at the hotel bar with Winston and he kept telling me, this is my son. <laughs> oh, it was a lot of hard drinking that night. I really don't. Oh, this is my son. <laughs> oh, 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 Winston Jr. I remember. Let me call him up. Yeah, yeah. I left your dad to die in the desert. Uh, his body <laughs> has been claimed by the sands. Uh, and I did not bother to bring it anywhere. Sorry. Just like that old bastard wanted. And the guy hangs up the phone. Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, so I love one of the great details here is Odette Fair rips the machine gun off the plane. And that's like his fucking, the badass weapon he's carrying around. It's pretty cool. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, we go in and like there's a bunch of fun action stuff that takes a while. Pretty much. I mean, there's no reason to go through all of it. Highlights include a scarab almost murdering Jonathan, but then Brendan Fraser cuts it out of this man's chest. You got to do it, dude. You just got to do it there. (laughs) And this is where I think, Steve, to your point about it would be cooler if there was more like horror elements. I'd be cool if I fucking saw this. Yeah, it's like blood. Like he's digging it out like Rambo taking out a bullet. Well, I have like my problem with the research is that uh, at some point, like you're, you're talking scarabs, they... At the point, at the early uh, when they're explaining what they do, they're like they eat very slowly. They like they picked Arnold Vosloo apart in this fucking chamber, and then like when you see them actually doing stuff, they go through them like me and a chicken wing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very true. It's so fast. It, it that's kind of that kind of doesn't make sense. Chris, I also eat chicken wings like a cartoon cat. <laughs> I, I All the, the way in, bones out, and I make the uh, the same clicking noise while I'm doing it. <laughs> oh no! Do you think the cat was in the plane and we didn't know it? Like that's it just got cut for time. <laughs> like oh fuck! Will they bury the cat in the quicksand? Yeah, too? that's yeah, that's our, sad. Our best weapon. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> like, fuck. Like, fuck. Yeah, it's like it's like losing your gun in a battle. Yeah, totally. <laughs> or losing your glasses in a temple. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's a great thing we hear where they all, they all, they reach this, there's a treasure room thing that we go through. Uh, but then this is Emotep dude. He's got a little fucking mummy army here. And I appreciate a lot of these dudes. These are the dudes just in practical suits. Yeah. Of course there's CGI to be had, but there are a lot of guys just running around in mummy costumes and around it, you here. Know what? It looks good. It does. Yeah, it totally does. I do like uh, Imhotep. Uh, Arlo Vassal gives them all a nod like, oh, my mummy army is back. Like, hello, gentlemen. <laughs> Getting the the band back together. Good to see the old boys here. <laughs> guess what? What's, what's it been? Three thousand years, fellas. Guess what? When my girlfriend gets back, I'm gonna let you watch me bang her. <laughs> oh yeah! Imhotep. Imhotep. No, he's just like no, gentlemen. This this world is full of hunks. I promise you, hunks, to resurrect you all. <laughs> oh man, hunks to beat the band in this movie. We are going to Melrose Place. <laughs> And, you know, we should say, you know, we were talking about, like, those American guys as the hunks. 
do not want to lose sight of at the the uh, the prologue of this movie. All of the Imhotep priests and the Pharaoh's bodyguards. These are all. It's a fucking snack room in mm-hmm. here, dude. Uh, the gold Jesus. the gold man group that we got going on here earlier on. Yeah, the body paint doesn't do it for me, but the other guys totally fine. Sure, some of them uh, are really <laughs> built too. Ooh. Oh my god, it's crazy. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the Arnold Vosloo, uh, Imhotep is trying to do the ceremony as Evie tied to a board with like the, his lady friend's mummy next to her. Again, this is, this is straight up from the old universal movies. Got it. Trying to do a little body switch action here. Um, although in, in the universal movies, I think they use the same actress to play the princess and the modern day character see that would be interesting because then it would be like oh like reincarnation is that a thing is well is that's that possible destiny e- but exactly dude and that's that's the way the original movie positions it because he looks at her and is like oh well that must be her or whatever and i think they do confirm she's a descendant and this movie the closest you get <laughs> is that ridiculous. she fucking says that her mother is egyptian question mark yeah and also like is jonathan's mother egyptian as well like how does that work I- I thought there was some stray line that she alludes to like a step or a half brother situation in that Um, same campfire scene. But I I can't be certain that that's what she says. The mummy is like Pepe Le Pew. He sees the first girl and he's like, yeah, (laughs) that's going to be my bride or whatever. It's just, it's, 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 it's Eric. He's, he's been in a box for 3000 years, dude. I guess so. He'd he'd fucking take Roseanne. (laughs) Oh, that's a female. Well, maybe, maybe not, actually. That's a female hunk. That's perfect. That's perfect for my <laughs> girlfriend. Hunk. Let's get one of those over here. A female hunk. You got more of these? Okay, so it's uh, The Mummy starring Tom Arnold and Roseanne Barr. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the 1980s Mummy. <laughs> oh, so much cocaine went into that screenplay. <laughs> uh, there's a great move somewhere around here. They're trying to just, like, fucking you know, raise hell and get out of this temple and whatever. Uh, but there's a, th- oh, that's what it is. They're running from some of these mummies and they're trying to like close the doorway. And Brendan Fraser has that, that same stick of dynamite from earlier. And he uses Oded Fair's stubble, like his beard oh, right, stubble yes. to light the match. Kind of a cool move. I have to say that felt very Indiana Jones. Yeah. Or like, um, you know, spaghetti Western. Oh, yeah, sure, definitely. Speaking of Indiana Jones, earlier on, uh, the, the fat guy that eats it from uh, Bugs, he goes, Bugs, I hate Bugs! And it's like, uh-huh. uh-huh. Oh, that uh-huh. sucks, I miss that. Mm-hmm. Ooh, what? There was one point in this movie where I did, because I was racing against time to you know, get the record on and everything, so I had to pee, and I definitely did not pause it for like two minutes. Uh, that might have been the Bugs part, dude. You didn't miss much? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. See, that's the, um, see, it's getting bogged down. It's getting bogged down. Well, so we'll, we will keep going forward then. So, uh, by the way, I keep saying Oded Fair. That's the actor. The character is Ardeth Bay. And so they're, we're fighting, you know, trying to get the, the, the find this fucking book here and everything. Uh, and then they're trying to get away. And this is where Ardeth Bay is like, no, no, no. You white people go on ahead. I'll stay <laughs> behind and kill all these mummies for you. It is more important that you live, not I. Yeah. Uh, so the, the ceremony is going on. Rick and Jonathan break into the fucking room. This is Brendan Fraser kicking some serious mummy ass in this scene. Pretty fun. Yeah, it's, it's fun. And, and, and you know, the, the, this, this probably goes on a little too long. We're just fucking around a bunch. Here's a thing that I'm really conflicted about because I think it's very funny, but it does, you guys are correct, add to the let's just fucking get to the end credits. He's fighting these mummies and there's a scene where like, or a moment in the scene where one mummy is trying to like hold him down while another one drops a huge tablet on him. Yes. And it's fucking hilarious. But I was like looking at the clock, like guys, he kicks some on, he kicks a mummy in the balls too. That's kind of fun. Yeah, I, yeah, I was curious about the mummy testicle situation. <laughs> <laughs> at the sub- <laughs> Nerd. Yeah. <laughs> It just turns into dust, obviously. My, like m- my mummy ball sack. <laughs> you know what it looks like if you kick a mummy in the nuts, actually, Steve? What's that? It's like when a baseball player is like uh, tossing the old pouch of chalk around <laughs> and getting his hands all chucked up. And all the like the chalk dust is flying that you kick a mummy in the nuts, dude. The same chalk dust goes everywhere. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> I mean, so whatever, man. They're trying to read from uh, the book or whatever. Jonathan reads a spell where there's all these mummies that he can control for a second. And he's like, 
hey, uh, mummies, why don't you go ahead and fucking kill Anaksum, uh, Anaksu Namur? That's the, the lady friend. Uh, so they do that. Imhotep's fucking pissed off about that. Where, you know, Rick, there's a dumbass thing right here. This is the dumbest part of the movie. He's going. The mummy's going after Jonathan, and uh, Brendan Fraser comes in and cuts off his arm. And then there's the fucking dumb thing where you see Arnold Vosloo just like pretending to push his arm back onto his shoulder. That's. I think this is Eric's uh, industrial light and magic. No, it's gonna look amazing. You got to put as many stupid effects in this movie as possible. Exactly. But that's what I'm saying, though. There's no effect here. Yeah. It's another, like, the arm falls off and Brendan Fraser's, like, or Jonathan's like, wow, look at that. And they run away and it cuts and it's literally just Arnold Vosloo stretching his hey, arm and holding hey it. Hey, Arnold. Hey, Arnold. Yeah, it's Steven. You know, your good friend Steven Summers. How you doing? <laughs> just rub your arm like you've been working out a lot. <laughs> just rub it like that. And then you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Okay, let's go rolling. I mean, that's it's pretty much what happened, Kevin. He's literally just like rubbing his shoulder like, oh, geez, I slept on that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, we just fight. There is some right here, this final battle with Arnold Vosloo and Brendan Fraser. For whatever reason, Arnold Vosloo is just down to underwear. Yeah. This dude was fucking physically fit for the mummy. <laughs> Absolutely. Holy <laughs> shit. Did you see the fucking thighs on this guy? Well, before this, he's got like a big open robe, like big, like it's like Arnold, uh, Alfred Molina and Boogie Nights again. <laughs> yes. It's, it's definitely it's, out. It's the professional wrestler while he's still walking down the ramp. <laughs> Just the big coat and everything. But yeah, this is like, now we're here for the main event. That fucking thing goes off. And this dude was fit as fuck for this movie. Mm. Uh, and they, they just fight a little bit or whatever. They finally uh, say the the rest of the lines from the book. And then this like horse-led chariot comes out of nowhere and steals Arnold Vosloo's soul from him. Sure. It looks like trash. It's <laughs> it not really good. Does. This is like fucking Disney's Haunted Mansion shit right here. And it's tough. And like and then they're like, oh, we thought we were going to kill him, but he, but he's still alive. But then uh, Brendan Fraser impales him, and he's just dead. Yeah, the, yeah, those things took away his, you know, made him mortal is the idea. Uh, so he drops down into some sort of fucking Lazarus pit here he gets, and says... He gets a, t- a T2 ending. Yeah, it is kind yeah. of a T2 ending, but uh, instead of I need a vacation, it's death is only the beginning. <laughs> it's like he goes halfway into, like, the under the skin pool. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> Uh, so that's like, oh, death is only the beginning. Subtle sequel setup. Time is um, but a door. Death the window. I'll be back. Is that what he says? Exactly, uh-huh. dude. He, he quotes Vigo the Carpathian G- verbatim. Got it. Got it. <laughs> He's a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were pals back in the day. Oh, and while sure. all this has been happening, uh, the dumb gag is we keep gutting back to Benny. Kevin J. O'Connor's character, and he is in the treasure room. He's been, you know, putting a bunch of treasure into sacks and trying to get this camel to help drag it all out. He's been tricking Elmer Fudd, been stealing (laughs) stuff from Daffy Duck. (laughs) Totally, dude. It's he's really causing some mischief. Well, now's the time to trick Elmer Fudd. He's no longer packing heat. (laughs) Oh, that's right, dude. What's his new hobby going to be? You think? Uh, Complaining about it. Yeah. I was like, I, you know what, uh, uh, Alex Jones here, I think his new hobby is going to be uh, being a crisis actor, you know, being paid to protest or whatever ri- liberal values they're shoving into these lo- lo- liberal tunes. Catch him in bed with a FUD. <laughs> liberal <laughs> tunes. Info FUD. Info FUD. That's definitely what that station is. Thank, you, thank you, Alex. I love your show. <laughs> oh, finally, I can get on a platform and express my opinion without feeling attacked. <laughs> you might as well make Tasmanian Devil not spin. You <laughs> disgust me. I spit on you. Oh, I'm looking around at all of my uh, former co-workers and uh, Bugs uh, still gets a carrot. <laughs> Tweety still uh, lives in a cage. Now, l- let, me, let me ask you this, Elmer. Are you, are you uh, uh, as upset as I am that I have to buy a DVD of Gone with the Wind instead of having it streaming? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I exclusively watch movies on HBO Max, and they took <laughs> off my favorite movie that I definitely could but will not stream on 10 other platforms. Let, let me ask you. Is there any worth having any other streaming service that doesn't have the word Max in it? <laughs> no, no, Be no, honest no. with me. It's not. It, now, isn't it true that uh, uh, streaming rights and licensing of certain titles to certain uh, distributors, that's, that's, imp- that's impending my freedom. 
<laughs> Call it Net Max. First Amendment right. Net Max. Oh, man. So, yeah, they, they you know, Kevin J. O'Connor accidentally hits the self-destruct button for this temple. Oops. You know, so, oh, we better get <laughs> moving, you know. Uh, but he is left behind in the treasure room to be fucking hilariously picked apart by these scarabs in the dark. I could have used a little more of that. I mean, it, obviously, it's a kid movie for kids. But, like, like obviously, the thing, like, all the lights go out and all these scarabs come out. And he's, he does scream in pain, which I appreciate. We, it's a really great blood-curdling scream, but it would be fucking awesome if all of a sudden you heard, like, a clicking sound. And it was this, like, a scarab was relighting one of the torches. <laughs> Just so th- all that, like the scarab community, could gaze upon their work and be like, "Wow, we really fucking ate that guy good." Or you could even do the blackout gag, where it's like it's, it's it goes black, he goes eek, and then he goes, "It's in my asshole." <laughs> <laughs> that way, at least you know you get a little bit, you get more of a visual image. Yeah, uh, Stephen, we uh, we really <laughs> love uh, this. The mummy, you have done it again. I mean, this is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun all around. One note. <laughs> Uh, the end of the movie, when your character, Benny, which is a character I just fell in love with, uh, screams, it's in my asshole when the lights go out. Yeah, you're going to you're going to have to cut that out. Universal Pictures does not support bugs going in people's asses, son. Fuck off. I walk. (laughs) Uh, That's the most important scene of the movie. So, yeah, we're going to keep it ties it all together. What are you talking about, man? The whole movie is working towards Kevin J. O'Connor getting a scarab to burrow up his ass. <laughs> Read the text. It's right there. Yeah, I did all the Brendan Fraser stuff, but that was just side stuff. That's the broccoli and mashed potatoes, man. The steak is Kevin J. O'Connor's asshole. <laughs> Release the asshole cuts. Yet again, we keep asking Truly, for it. Yeah. Every movie has one, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we should have like a POV shot of those like those scarabs like going down and going right up into his butt and going like a nice little sound effect like, thump, goes to the side <laughs> and then it goes dark. Yes, that would be pretty great, dude. You know what you could do, Eric? You get a tape recorder, go out to uh, one of the old like drive-through tellers at a bank <laughs> where you put the little thing in the tube and it goes like thunk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the sound you should capture. Or Absolutely, it ends like Uncut Gems begins because you follow this thing into his colon. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I would love that, dude. Yeah, pulling a reverse uncut gems. Uh, so whatever, man. Everybody escapes. It turns out Ardeth Bay has lived to fight another day. Well, so he's just got, he, tested, he's got a little, he like, tested very well. They're like, you got to get that, that hunk oh, back. Yeah. One thing I forgot. What is with the ghost chariot? That's what we were talking about, dude. That's the thing it that steals, looks like something out of Haunted Mansion. Yeah, but, it takes his oh, immortality I, away. I thought you were talking about the soul wave thing. Oh, there's two couple of there's a couple of things that happen there. Yeah. Yeah, whatever yeah. that shit is crawling out of the pool. No. Wouldn't, yeah, the the chariot thing. Okay. Wouldn't it be great if it was just one thing? The one thing yeah, makes a lot nice. of sense. Yeah, it's clear. I still don't know what that pool is. That soul pool. I do not know what the soul pool is either. But, but you know what's crazy? It's two weeks in a row where we're talking about movies with soul pools, by the way. <laughs> That's true. Scooby Doo had one. But we like I remember the the soul pool is in the early when they take the soul out of uh, uh, uh the girlfriend early on. The chariot thing, I just don't know what that is. Yeah. It's it's really out of left field and doesn't work. <laughs> no nobody knows what it is. Just have a I chariot scene. Have a chariot scene, Steven Summers. Well, because you can't even see who's driving it. You can just sort of make out like three horses. <laughs> Is that the Pharaoh? And they're all, I mean, maybe oh, it's supposed I mean, to be his like chariot. That would make sense if the Pharaoh Satai came back like you you betrayed me in, in, yeah, in life sure. and now death. No. Yes, exactly. Like get get that dude to come back and yeah, he's all like a CGI blue ghost or whatever, but it would work. <laughs> <laughs> we're smurfs now <laughs> that's the fucking egyptian afterlife look if kevin j o'connor's asshole's number one the ghost chariot's number two okay so it stays in i don't care if it doesn't make sense steven summers had some weird priorities for this movie it sounded like <laughs> not what you'd expect honestly that's true uh and so i mean that's the end of the movie like brandon fraser and rachel vice kiss on a camel because they have to sure uh because it's a fucking hollywood movie uh, the brother starts like throwing up. He's so disgusted that someone's tongue kissing his sister mm-hmm. in front of him. Sister fucking. Here we go. Yep. Everyone's drinking Coronis <laughs> at the end, riding through the hot <laughs> desert with a cool Coroni. 
But then you find out as they're riding away and this guy's complaining, oh, we, we did all that for nothing. And by the way, we caused the deaths of, I don't know, hundreds of people. Uh, our, our fucking white Tom fuckery in, in Egypt <laughs> has cost at least the death of a hundred people. I would say that's fucking that's a safe minimum, dude. <laughs> yeah, and like those those hunks died the worst way possible, and it's totally your fault. I would have a little bit of introspection, no, but it's like, no. oh, we got nothing out of this, and then oops, the camel has a bunch of gold on it. Oh right, yeah. There's a, one of Kevin J O'Connor Connor's uh, like little bags has a bunch. Of, there's a bunch of overflowing jewels and whatnot in it. And that's that's uh, that's the end of the mummy, man. Yeah, Two thousand one, the mummy returns happens. But yeah, what were you saying, Kevin? Cue the Wiz Khalifa, Paul Walker is dead song. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! I got that camel's pink slip. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired, camel. Oh, that kind of pink slip. Oh, I thought the camel was being laid off. Uh oh, we're in trouble. Let's hit the nos on this camel. <laughs> 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 like injects it with fucking opium. <laughs> oh my god! It works the opposite effect. It's like flames <laughs> coming out of the camel's asshole. Oh fuck! <laughs> it's just it's just fucking this brother feeding it chili. <laughs> For some reason, there's a neon green light under the camel. Like, how did that work? <laughs> Oh, the camel's dashboard! <laughs> his fucking they they like bend his fucking tail out of shape to make it a spoiler. <laughs> Jesus! Uh, would anybody recommend Stephen Summers' The Mummy, nineteen ninety nine? Yeah, somebody on Twitter right before we j- jumped on the air uh, put this the right way. I'll I'll see if I can credit them here. Oh. Uh, it's a god tier hangover movie, I think. Uh, yes, I did see that tweet. I agree with that. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna pull it up. Just you know, you, you like to credit, show your work here. Uh, but yeah, sure. I, I had a lot more fun with this than I thought I was going to. For the longest time, it's like, oh, the movie sucks, yada, yada. I think I might be conflating with the sequel as well, which sucks really bad, I believe. Yeah. Um, but this one is – it's super fun. It's a bit too long. I don't think it's like a great, great movie. Uh, it's not, certainly not one of the best action movies of 1999. Looking at you, The Matrix. Uh, this is uh, uh, Jamie underscore Marie. So there you go. Uh, on Twitter. Said it's a god tier hangover movie. And it is. That's what I think. Uh, Chris Cabin, what'd you think, oh, buddy? Oh, yeah. This is my second favorite Stephen Summers movie, Deep Rising being in the number one spot because it's got blood in it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed I actually watched this recently. I watched it last year, and I still enjoyed myself here. I, I do agree. A hundred minutes of this would have been perfect. Mm. But, uh, uh, you, know, two, you know, two hours and four minutes, that's a bit much. Uh, uh, talking about The Mummy Returns, Steve, uh, I went to see that in theaters with my father. Uh-huh. Uh, already. And we went, uh, 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 they get to a part, they're in like a, 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 a hot air balloon. Uh, and my dad like yanked me out of the theater and <laughs> like we walked across to Moulin Rouge. He, <laughs> thought, he thought it was going to be better. And uh. then, I'm not kidding you, 40 minutes into Moulin Rouge, he yanks me out of there. <laughs> <laughs> and we go and, and like I'm like just a teenager at this point and like and like I'm like what's going on and this is verbatim the movies fucking suck <laughs> oh, and, and I left and I I had to watch them both on DVD when they came out I kind of movie. wish that that story went on and on and he kept going to find the right one like yeah. Goldilocks <laughs> <laughs> this movie's too stupid well this one's too boring <laughs> oh that is fucking hilarious Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric Siska, how are you feeling about this movie, well, buddy? Well, um, I did. Uh, uh, I always thought it was bad when I, uh, but but rewatching it, I did reappraise it, and I was hungover this morning. So perfect. <laughs> it is a good hangover movie. I, this is a light recommend, very light recommend from me because I do feel like that middle gets it's a little too fun in games where I'm just like, yep. okay, all mm-hmm. right, all right, okay. Like I get the characters, I don't have to keep getting them and keep going through these wacky adventures with them. Save some for the Mummy Returns, pal. Your movie <laughs> is longer than Star Wars, so mm. light recommend. There you go. Uh, yeah, I, it's a recommend for me, man. I I do like this movie. I have not. It was actually. It was one of those things. It was really pleasant. I was kind of like just sort of quietly excited when we decided to do this because I hadn't seen this movie in a really long time. Uh, so I was happy that it held up for me. The Mummy Returns, another note on The Mummy Returns uh, and why it amps up the suckage so much more is uh, it takes place like a few years after the first movie and you better believe they have since married and there was a shit-eating kid in it. That's what it is. Okay. Yep. And he fucking sucks and it's just the absolute worst. 
this little like Freddy or like whatever his obnoxious name is, you he know, it's shit. Just, he doesn't eat shit, but oh. man, you fucking want him to. Oh, the, the, I, the character's name is Alex. I thought it was directed by John Waters. Uh, next, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, but also, I mean, you do have uh, Dwayne Johnson in that movie as the Scorpion King. Who's setting up five sequels to the Scorpion King, oh. five spinoff films. And I think if I'm remembering it right, his appearance in this movie is some like fucking Goro Mortal Kombat level like CGI <laughs> garbage. Yeah, I think it's a, a setup for a spinoff. Like they knew that they were doing immediately. They were like, oh, it's the Scorpion King. Look out for him. And then they knew they were going to do a separate so movie. So there's the Scorpion King and then four sequels, a total of five films. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I, I'm certain Dwayne Johnson is only in the first yeah. one. I, I think. And then it was like whatever professional bodybuilder was around. Like, I think, is Kurt Hennig in some of those Kurt movies? Hennig? Possibly. I think Rick Ortiz is in like three of them. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot. It's a, Billy Zane shows up at some point. Billy Zane's in one yeah. of those movies? Probably is a bad guy, I would guess, if I had to guess. Oh, yeah. Big old bald bad guy, that Billy Zane, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh oh, that's a weird thing because the old guy in this movie was also in Titanic with Billy Zane, that's so that's true. something. Uh, but anyway, so that is the Mummy from 1999, directed, of course, by uh, Mr. Steven Summers. If you want more We Hate Movies, check out the Patreon, Patreon.com/slash We Hate Movies. Uh, June's We Love Movies episode uh, is up, right? That is, we still uh, yes, there's no country. Yes, for no this country month. for old men. It was a great episode. People are loving it. I, I tell I, an interesting story about my dad. It's worth it. Um, it's so fucking <laughs> funny. That is a classic, Mr. Yeah. Sadek story. My God, I'm I. It's, it's a good actually. One. It's back to back, really great, Mister Sadak and Mister Cabin's. Oh yeah, oh, there's a god tier Chris Cabin's dad story on that one too. <laughs> uh, but the summer blockbuster extravaganza oh, is continuing. I'm, I'm sorry, what? we would be remiss if we didn't know, mention that the Catsman Terry is out. By the way, oh of course, the Catsman at the eight dollar level. That's a, that's a uh, single commentary to the hit movie Cats from 2019. Ooh. Listen to us get pretty loaded uh, <laughs> talking about cats while we're watching it. It's really something. Uh, so that is also out now. Yes, absolutely. Um, check out uh, all the offerings on Patreon. Patreon.com slash We Hate Movies. And uh, uh, if you go onto our merch, if you go to our merch store, any merch merchandise that you buy from T Public uh, via We Hate Movies this this year. The entire year of 2020 will be uh, all of the proceeds that we get will be donated to uh, charities uh, that uh, are adjacent to Black Lives Matter and fight racial injustice and police uh, brutality. Right. So, yeah, that is all uh, on our website, whmpodcast.com. Yep. Real quick, check out our YouTube channel as well. We've we've done some of these quarantine mailbags. They're a lot of fun. It's great to watch along. And there will be previews of the cat's commentary, among other commentaries, if you're interested in all the other stuff we are doing besides just this podcast every Tuesday. There you go. Now, Steve Sadak, the summer blockbuster extravaganza is rolling on next Tuesday. What uh, big old blockbuster were you talking about then? Such a big blockbuster. I'd left it off the Big Daddy Dispatch the first two times I sent it. It is (laughs) Shrek the Third. There it is. We're going back. Speaking of, I don't even know what, speaking of shit. Uh Speaking (laughs) of shit, dude. Speaking of fucking shit monsters. We're back. Uh, Shrek the Third. And now we are into uh, Shrek territory. I've never seen uh, Shrek the Third. No, me neither. Yeah, I've me, never me seen neither, it. but I, I, I've had a tradition of getting extremely drunk on those past episodes, and will it continue? We'll see. <laughs> we will have to stay tuned for that. Uh, so until next week, oh my God, I just can't even believe it. With Shrek the Third, I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Cabin. Take it easy. That was a HeadGum Podcast.